Welcome back to the uh, March 8th, 2023 meeting of the select board. We're back from executive session. We'll now begin the uh, regular order of business. Um, the first thing is, well, we have scheduled, I, I don't see, oh, public comment. Do we have any public comment? All right. Uh, we have a, a scheduled appearance at 6.15, but I think we can go down to um, Selectman's announcements and get that done real quick. I have um, the founding of Deerfield and its early settlement, uh, a talk by uh, Dr. Peter Thomas um, at the Frontier Regional High School Auditorium on March 26. It's from two o'clock to 3.30. I think it will be very, very interesting for everyone. Um, it will be posted on our website. Uh, and I'm going to put this on the front door. The other announcement I have is that Deerfield Yard by Yard program is going to have its launch event on April 8th from 2 to 4 he, right here at the Deerfield Town Hall. And you, we're going to have books. We're going to have plants. We're going to have design in your yard. Lots of prizes to win. And it's a talk by Owen Warmser. And it's... Um, the start of our healthy soils, uh, beautification of the deer field. So that will also be on the front door and it will also be posted on our town website if people want to have any information. So again, that's March 26 for Peter Thomas's excellent, interesting um, talk. And there'll be snacks provided by the Friends of Deerfield. And then the Deerfield Yard by Yard program on April 8th. And Hopefully you'll walk away with all kinds of handouts and prizes. Tim, did you have anything else you want to talk about? I know you're working on quite a few things. <clears throat> and just to update that we're pursuing uh, federal funding opportunities for um, the town campus project. Um, and uh, there's some deadlines coming up. So we're working to get our applications in order and present them. Um, what else am I working on, Carolyn? Well, you have a meeting next Wednesday at 8 a.m., I believe, to go through with uh, Boo, um, or at least Waitley and Sunderland over at the church right. building. Right, yes. So, with yeah. Denise Mason. Yeah, we'll be looking at uh, um, remediation issues and uh, discussing with the South County uh, Senior Center uh, Board of Oversight uh, about possible uses for that space as a transitional senior center. Um, so we're optimistic about that. And well, I just want you to know how appreciative I am of you doing that because we have that hundred thousand um, dollar earmark that we need to spend by June 30th. So thank you, Tim. Yep. And we're looking, just looking for agreement from the other two towns to move ahead with, uh, you know, what we think are appropriate um, measures there. Um, and I think that's enough for tonight. Um, I was going to say that um, we put in abatement <clears throat> any approval of minutes from before I was elected since there's no, not enough people to vote in favor of them. But we do have, I think, one set of minutes from this year that we could mm -hmm. take up. We can. Uh, we can do minutes. After we do the Board of Health announcements, I yes. think we got plenty of time. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I just wanted to make sure that, Casey, did you have any problems with the Valley Health um, Regional Collaborative IMA? Okay. Um, I would like to make a motion that um, I be authorized to sign off on that to get that back then. Um, and I'll second the motion. Do you this, want to discuss what it is? This is for our public health excellence grant, the second one. Um, we have one for, I believe, seven years. No, the first one is almost 10 years, and it's almost 300,000. This is a second grant for seven years that is almost 300,000. It's 292,000 um, that we spent, that we share with um, Greenfield as the lead community, and it's Montague, Greenfield, Deerfield, Sunderland, uh, Shootsbury, and Leverett. And this is for shared um, health agent for coverage, extra hours, and also social worker potentially next year. We, I mean, we have to hire. We have to. 
It takes a while to go through all the setup, but the intention is to hire social worker and um, health agent on this grant. We hired public health and, and have extra public health hours. The public health grant, the other one that we had before, so it's not confusing, is a public health grant for four additional public health nurses to be shared by Montague, Greenfield, Sunderland, and Deerfield. It's a two different groups, two different um, public health excellent grants. And are they um, yearly at that, at that funding level, or is this cumulative? This is yearly. Excellent. It's quite a huge, um, for us, it's a huge um, impact on our, our department because, you know, our budget is so limited. Um, so, uh, all those in favor? Um, Tim Hill, GI. Carolyn Ness, I. Okay. And, and I'd just like to say that um, I really appreciate all the work you do on the public health issues that um, give a great benefit to the town. So thank you. Well, there's unfortunately seven meetings a month like with these grants. So they're not free <laughs> that's, why, but. that's why I know you're working hard. Uh, um, anyway, um, I also want to know to let everyone just as an update. Um, actually, Alex was really good. He has done some more research on some software, but the pub, one of the things that the public health grants will pay for is software for um, the health departments on everybody that is in the collaborative, the Valley Health Collaborative, that's what we call ourselves. So um, no decisions have been made, but I just wanted to make sure from a budgetary point of view, people were aware that that was purchasing uh, happening. The other thing I just wanted to make people aware of is that there is additional sampling happening on the Deerfield River. Right now, it's basically about nit nitrogen load, but um, we do have an exposure as a town. When it rains, we have um, intense rain events that come down off the upper road and it channels into the Deerfield River. And what that does is not just pollutants, but it's also, um, especially in the summer, it's superheated water. And that is very impactful on a cold river like the Deerfield River. So um, I would like us to make sure the board is aware and it has no problem with me reaching out to um, um, Hydro Quebec is a new owner. We, we had initially started work with TransCanada right. um, in that because TransCanada owns right next to the abutments of, our, of the Stillwater Bridge. And we need to put in some kind of filtration device that will capture this water and then slowly filtrate it so it cools it and, and the pollutants drop out before it goes into the water. Unfortunately, even years ago, it was like $500,000. So we were trying to work with TransCanada and NRCS to come up with some kind of solution that would address this. So we had no, then it was sold to Great River Hydro, which was just a holding group that made money, but they have since sold it to Hydro Quebec, which is truly an energy company like TransCanada. And so I feel like it's worth trying to be proactive rather than being ordered to do this, we start working again. Mm -hmm. But I needed the board to have consensus that this was a good. Do you want a motion to authorize your uh, representation to? No, because I'm just, I'm looking for money, so. Okay, well. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like you're okay with that. Okay, uh, 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 yeah, I, Well, you're fine. If you want to make yeah. a motion, I'll second. No, no, no. I'm, uh, I, if it's a consensus thing, I'm all in favor. Yeah, because I don't really. Yeah. Obviously, I want someone else to pay for it, and I want it to be done before we're ordered to pay for it. So mm -hmm. it's just more or less trying to match up what's available under the new farm bill that's coming out in September. Mm -hmm. And it's a new five-year bill that gives us other opportunities for funding and, um, and, and reaching out to Quebec Hydro, which we haven't done any outreach yeah. before. So... As long as you're okay with it, I'll move. Absolutely. Forward. And Casey can put it in the minutes so that, you know, it's okay with me. Yep. Oh, Kevin. Yes. Hello. Hey, um, just keep in the back of your mind, you know, the bridge is going to be, uh, DOT is going to be in there doing the bridge. Um, I know. So there, okay. there, there's some opportunity at that point. And at one point we did a backup napkin with 
uh, uh, was an engineer, Tony DeSimone. He used to be with Weston and Samson. I hijacked him one day and we brought up there. And we looked and it looked like you could probably go on the west side of the bridge, the existing bridge right now. You could probably make a couple of settling ponds where it would go ahead and settle in and it'll cascade down into the second one. So we'd have an opportunity to cool down a little bit and actually pick up any of the contaminants. So that was just, like I said, a back of the napkin. So, so that was different than what that design, that filtration holding tank was. Is it oh yeah, yeah. This is this is basically it's a hole. It's 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 so natural. It's it's the way to go. In, okay. Because it, it's cheap. Basically, well, all you do is you dig a hole and you let it build into that. You put some riprap, so it's got the opportunity to go ahead and and bleed off into the next one. It's like a cascading from from one um one pond to another to another, and then eventually going into the river. So you don't now, have what, any problem. We, you don't have any problem then. You know, for me. So, so it's it's just something that you know it has been thought of, and you know we're we're looking in that direction, um, and hopefully maybe we can get DOT to go ahead and in, include this as part of their their bridge thing, you know, because they're only at like twenty five percent. So now is a good time to go ahead and start hammering on it. So when we do have that meeting coming up on the twentieth, I believe it is. So that's something else we can toss into that. Oh, that would be perfect, Kevin, because the new farm bill is coming out, and NRCS would have some new funding and new programs available. And there's more money from the IRA money, you know, the Inflation Reduction Act money. So we're closing in on the 615, and I'd like oh, to yes. I make a motion to approve the minutes for February 8th, 2023. And I will second that. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Tim Hill, G. I. Carolyn Ness, I. Perfect. And we will uh, hold the other ones until Trevor's back. Um, And so that's okay, Kevin? I just want to make sure. Okay, you know what I'm doing. We're trying to address it proactively rather than an order and connect it with DOT and everything. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is uh, well, 6.15. We have an appearance um, from Colonial Power. And I know David's here. I don't see MA, but. Well, that's our call, huh? Oh, well, we only have a certain number of mics. So. And if you don't talk into them, no. Okay. Yeah. It'll be like you weren't even here. There we go. They don't need me anyway. But I just thought so. I'd show up. Um, oh. Well, obviously, it was a really good deal that we had. Uh, I don't think there's anyone that has complaints about having being locked in um, from the aggregation. So, um, Hello. Hello. You introduce yourselves again. I'm sorry. Yep. And Mark and, and Denise, go ahead. Mark Capitona, Colonial Power, 5 Mount Royal Ave, Marlboro, Mass. Denise Allard, also with Colonial Power Group. David Gilbert, Keith, Chair of the Energy Committee here, who's been working with Thank aggregation you. stuff. So maybe you could tell us where we are. I know we're coming up on an anniversary where we need to start getting ahead of the curve. It, absolutely. So. Um, Right now, we're, what we're trying to do is prepare for the end of the contract for you, which would be uh, January of 2024. So the rate that you currently have, you'll continue to have that rate. And uh, give me one second. I know it's, I think it's 9-3. Yes. Um, so um, that rate will, will be uh, static right from now until uh, the January meter wreath. And then after that, the reason we're in front of you is to talk about the process, which we're, we're trying to move uh, kind of the Franklin County communities back into a a, a, a procurement uh, uh, situation. So you've been shielded, but the energy markets have been absolutely tumultuous. <laughs> and I'm saying to you, record high, historic highs. Uh, you're here, so it's 22 cents if you're on basic service. But uh, people are very close. National Grid had a, a rate of 33 cents a kilowatt hour, almost 34, uh, 33,891. So this aggregation is shielded that. We're seeing rates <clears throat> in the marketplace come down tremendously. And I'm, I'm saying to you tremendously, but it's a brand new world. So nine cent power is not available any longer, um, at least right now. Uh, we're seeing some rates, maybe uh, 12s and 13s, um, whether or not that continues down further. We don't know, as well as we're not certain what the madman is doing in Ukraine. So that's kind of our biggest concern right now. The energy, the gas market, which is the driver for electricity, is literally back in between two and three dollars a, a you know a, a, an MMBTU. So 
almost identical to where it was when we went out to bid, but electricity mar markets in uh, Iceland, New England are still elevated. And I believe they're going to stay elevated for a little while here, just due to the constraints mm -hmm. um, on getting gas here. You know, once, once we can, we've, we're doing an excellent job and trying to get renewables in. We're doing a, a diff, we're having a difficult time with a handoff between a renewable grid and something that had carbon on it. So we're struggling in between the two, but we're going to get there. It's just going to take us a little while. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I'm here just to answer any questions anyone has. You see, I think you have all the, you know, where we're kind of trying to get to, yes. uh, you know, from that standpoint, it, we had a meeting, we may have one more, but we're going to try to get some pricing in front of Casey. Uh, and tonight might be the approval for her just to look at that pricing. So what we actually did at the last meeting, and it was right after um, the aggregation meeting that we all sat in, I asked the board to consider um, a signatory authorization. They actually authorized any one of us, including Trevor, depending on the criticality, who's available essentially. So I had advised them that you know, that was your first and most important ask. So we're in a place where we can move move to next steps. I don't know where the rest of the towns are, but one of the reasons I wanted you to come is just sort of give them the, give the select board sort of a direct interface with you. Sure. Uh, because I know you're going to want to move on this um, <laughs> so, request for proposals very soon. Correct. What we're trying to do right now, and, and Denise can talk to this best, uh, is kind of hurt all the cats, if you will. We have, we have you know, 13 uh, communities here that we're trying to get together and then get this RFP on the street and Denise, I'll let, let you kind of talk to the timeline that we're thinking right now. Right. We're still compiling data from all 13 communities. We're putting everything together into what we call a load profile so we can get that out to the supply community. So we're hoping to do that in the next five to seven days and get that out there. We would like to also put some dates around that for the supply community so they can start planning. So what we what we had sent to Casey was indicative pricing on April 10th, looking to do executable pricing on April 24th. Now, um, the indicative pricing is informational purposes only, kind of get everybody together, um, you know, kind of, this is what the matrix looks like. It was three years ago, you know, yeah. the prices, the different products that are available. We also sent out a, um, a survey. The group asked that we kind of put a survey together of products so folks could look at what products we were going to ask for pricing on and, and anyone can suggest new products. We can insert that in. So we're getting kind of good smattering of, of different levels of green and what everyone wants to see. We're trying to, like Mark said, there's 13 communities, so everybody doesn't necessarily have the same goals. Um, so we're trying to kind of make sure everyone's represented. Um, we'll get pricing back on the 10th. That's informational purposes only. We'll have meetings. Folks can come back and talk to select board to talk to you guys. And then we're looking to get executables on 424. Now, that doesn't mean everybody has to sign, right? It's executable. It is actionable. Mm -hmm. But if the group comes together and doesn't like what they see, no action has to be taken. We can go out and get executable at a later date. But we, we think given where the market is, this is a good time to actually look at executable and, and have the discussion. So that's kind of where we're trying to get everybody towards right now. So that that's why we authorize mm -hmm. all four of us. One of to, us, whoever's available. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoever's available could sign and agree right. immediately. And so just so uh, we can tease out some information here. Um, we we're okay through January of 2024, but can we do an ex executable in April that goes from that date forward, or do we have to do it from the immediate date? No. So what we'll do is this will be from the the meter read in January forward. Okay. So that, but this contract will be the nine cents will stay in place until the January meter right. read, and then there'll be some new contract the mm -hmm. next leg. And in the current in the current markets, uh, and your your your, your statement saying that. Mine's not coming back. I mean, uh, would thirteen be a good price? Right, right now, given given the winters, so believe it or not, it's the winter December. We call it Dece, Jan, Feb. Mm -hmm. That is what drives the price. The mm -hmm. rest of the months have all settled in, right, and are very reasonably priced. But the the pricing is so high mm -hmm. in the winter months that it's driving that up. But I would I would say to you. 12 to 13 is where we're seeing pricing right now, mm -hmm. which again is, you know, 50 cents in the dollar compared to last winter for people on basic service, not you, but people that were, you know. Right. Oh, uh, I know. My son lives in out east and he's paying 32 cents. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, yes, exactly. exactly. So, yeah. So that, the reason why I asked is just because um, if we, 
I know this is like asking you to tell me where the stock market's going to be tomorrow, but um, what is the what is your professional opinion about the the lowest price we're likely to see in the coming months? So, and, and I'm going to answer this to the best opinion, I the know. best I can. I'm saying to you, <laughs> if we continue to, to pump natural gas the way we are, right? And right now we had a very warm winter, so what we have for in storage is very high. Mm -hmm. But there's this wild card known as Ukraine and Russia. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I mean, it was a driver this past winter. Yeah. We had a warm winter. You would think that winters would be starting to come off a little bit. But the problem we have is what is the gentleman in Russia going to do? And the reason we're, we're trying to get out right now is, hey, we take some of the risk off. He gets upset that he hasn't won the war yet and does something crazy in Europe. And, and, and for the, because the driver has been, just so that everyone gets this, is LNG, mm -hmm. liquefied natural gas. And in Europe, they were going to get frozen out they would pay any amount of money for liquefied natural gas. So believe it or not, in New England, that's how we backfill our system. We're so starved for natural gas. We get to heat our homes first before they can generate electricity. So we had to pay extra to get gas in every, to, to backfill the system, regasify it and, and fill it in that way. Because during those cold snaps, now, good for you and me, we didn't have any this winter. We had really one cold day, but it takes three before you actually start to strain the system. Mm -hmm. So all of that being said, I don't think 12 cents is going to be a bad, my biggest um, concern is the amount of time, mm -hmm. right? So when we came out the last time, I, I wish we could have went for, <laughs> for six years, if you know where I'm going, but capacity doesn't allow us to get that bid yet. So uh, at this time, my biggest concern is 36, 24, 18, what exactly is the term that we're going to be looking? And I just don't know how people will be pricing those out. We have not been out in the market since December. So we haven't seen any pricing. Yeah, I've heard some pricing, 13, 14 cents. You have an excellent load profile. I know that from your, uh, your current pricing. So I'm expecting you to be a little bit lower than that. What I don't know is how aggressive they're going to be given the risks in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. That's our biggest concern right now, which is why... Thank you, Denise, because all of the data and all the suppliers will have literally within two days, they could price now because I'm going to say they, they basically put all their data in their pricing machine, if you will. Once it's there for them to price, hit a button, here we go, make their adjustments and we can get pricing. We want you to be there ready to go. It, if something's going to happen, it, it can only go so far so fast. So this so, is the de defensive position mm -hmm. we're taking. So the variables are, you have like um, packages that say, we'll give you this price for one year, we'll give you this price for two years, we'll give you this price for three years. And and is that the maximum time limit that we can expect to be have available to us? Is, yeah, 36 is about as far as they'll go. And that's due to an energy, it's called the capacity, the forward capacity market. Sure. They're only out there three years. Mm -hmm. Going anything past there, they're going to put a premium risk. on what they don't know. Right. And I don't want you to pay the premium. And as far as our aggregation goes, the, the other communities say 10 of us want to move forward and three don't. Does that change the price? Well, that's an interesting, uh, that, that's Tim, that's an excellent question. And I, I hope we don't end up at that spot because what we said, what the group has done is said, we'll all go for the same time with the same supplier. We get to choose our products. So if somebody backed out, it would change the overall load profile mm -hmm. and could require us to come back to the table the following day with someone out or not. Mm -hmm. It depends on which community that would be like, how large is that community? Right. What's their load profile? You know, if you have 200 accounts back out, might not change the pricing. Mm -hmm. But if you have Sunderland or Whitley, or, yeah. <laughs> you know. Or 1,700, that is, it's a good size load. Yeah. yeah. And so if... Um, if I recall correctly, you had, did you have two products? Like one was. Actually had six, six that you could have chosen from. And then there was the default pro product. RPS, correct. Yeah. So um, that should give towns enough variability to say, you know, we're giving our, our residents an opportunity to pick 100%, 80%, a blend of, yeah. And the one thing I'll say is 
if the if I'm just we have kind of just benchmarks 25, but most of the suppliers, if you said, hey, 25 is a little strong on the price. I, I know you guys have the pen, right? So, so fiduciary, you want to make sure that it, it also meets some, everyone can afford electricity. Let's just say you said, that's a little strong. I'd like to have 20%. Most of the suppliers will drop that price commensatory to the 20% of the 15 that you're actually looking for. Mm -hmm. So although we have, you know, you know, 25 and 50, 75 or 100, those are just kind of benchmarks. Most times that they'll meet the needs of the community. Yeah, and I think that's why we're doing indicative too. We'll look at those products during the indicative round. And if, if folks, third hands want to make adjustments, you know, like this pricing looks here, why don't we drop this down or raise this up based on what everyone's seeing for pricing? Then we can make those adjustments between indicative and executable. You know, it gives everybody a lay of the land, some time to go away and think about it. And then we can go back out to the suppliers and say, we want to add a product or we want to adjust a product or mm -hmm. something like that. It gives us the room. I would just say that my impression the from other people in David, the, talk into the mic. my impression yeah, from the other communities during meetings and so on was that the experience over the last three years um is keeping them on board they yes. they saw that it worked oh i you think did. people generally are thrilled to death yeah seriously I can't remember, Mark, if I saw you at the MMA conference or not. I I, I did speak with somebody briefly during one of the uh, aggregation seminars. I and, did see you. Yeah. you. You spoke with Stuart Ormsby at Chloe. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, and uh, so, yeah, they have a long historical data that suggests that aggregations definitely in the usually works for people. It uh, has the last, you, you know, eight uh, at, la at least the last six years, it mm -hmm. has been beneficial to have mm -hmm. a long-term stable rate. Yeah, and the, and that sometimes it tweaks out a little, but uh, it tends to level off in favor of aggregation. And I, I just ran the numbers. I only have them through uh, September, unfortunately, here. But so far, Deerfield has saved $752,000. Oh, my God. Through September. And the big savings are actually starting in January here. So we're on a delay. We're on a delay. And, and, and as far as numbers go, is that an annual figure? Is that a, that, that is the, that's through the, the course of the contract through the course through September from yeah. launch, from launch, yes. from launch. Yeah. Okay. And in September, there was 1600 residential, uh, 1632 residential um, meters on 195 commercial and six industrial customer uh, customers. So we've been doing our businesses a favor as well. Mm -hmm. Big, big time. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Big time. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, What's out of this idea? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Well, well, we, we've been doing it, but but certainly the energy committee has brought it to I us, know. and I don't know it bubbled up through Furcon, right? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, MA. I would have asked David and MA. Thank and you, MA. How is how are your communication? <laughs> <laughs> how is your uh, communication going with the other twelve towns, and uh, where are you at in discussions? Pretty well. I mean, we had that introductory meeting that Casey referred to, so we got everybody on Zoom, and then we we sent out another email. We've heard some from some folks some feedback on what we sent out. So I don't know. We might have to set up another in, uh, meeting before pricing. Just if I don't know, there might be some discussion on the products or what what we want to offer. But um, yeah, I think it's going well. Yeah, I think it's going well. Um, you know, I think it's just refreshing everybody's memory, right? It was right. three years back, and so um, some people have come, some people have gone. We just need to get everybody back up to speed and the conversation going again. But we have time to do that, and I think we'll be. We'll be good to go. Everybody, everybody's eager to to see what the pricing is and to kind of get the. I know people are getting questions, right? From what's the next? What are the you know residents? I are think asking. we all. Yeah, I think everyone's worried. They want to get locked in. Right. Right. So well, right. you did miss the big spike because okay. I mean it yeah, is great. it has come all the way down the other side. Mm -hmm. So that that was helpful because my biggest concern is the first contract ends and the the biggest problem with the, with a wonderful contract. Is the next contract mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right so my biggest concern was and, and we're over the other side of it and we're starting to get everything in line so i do feel like you're not going to feel the pain of this electricity spike due to the you know the long-term nature that you guys decided to choose mm -hmm. that's wonderful and uh you have any since more yeah i'm sort of learning this i'm a, a newbie to the select board so this is my first aggregation role but so go the two-hour window when we have to press the button um all 13 communities have to do it within that two hour window. 
Yeah, so what, the way it works is we'll get pricing probably around 11 o'clock. We'll put it all on a spreadsheet for each one of the communities to take a look at so that they can actually take a look at the pricing and what it means. And you'll get that around noon. We start a call at around one o'clock. Yeah. The good news is you're going to have seen this pricing 10 days earlier, 14 days earlier. Right. You're going to be very uh, acclimated to what you're looking at. It's going to really yeah. just be priced. I want to do something or I don't want to do something. And that's why we do the indicative round. We're happy to stay on the phone as long as we want, given the volatility in the electricity markets. From, from one to say 2.30, that's about how much time we have. And the reason is all 13 towns, we need to get their approval, yes, and we have to get it back, get to the supplier, and then they need to set a hedge. Go buy electricity for, for the, all the Franklin County communities at that time. And the market has not been uh, participating late. So three, we used to have to 3.30, quarter four. Now we have three o'clock and, and all the suppliers want to have pricing. If, if you want to be able, able to set that hedge that day. Yeah, they want signatures. They don't just want our word that we have a signature. You know, yeah. They want they ink want on paper. Yeah. So do we do this electronically? So we'll be on a call, actually probably a Zoom, right? Right, And then it's just simply a signature page, which could be signed ahead of time, dated. And then you just simply send us over a PDF yeah. or a fax. Yeah, mm -hmm. we scan it. We're going to send them out early, these signatures. Right, okay, them. that's the... Yeah, so mm -hmm. we're scrambling, we're just concentrating on it. Right, so a, a photograph on an iPhone would be Mark? fine. And then yes. the follow-up with the hard copy. Um, My impression has been that you don't know the actual day that that will happen, or do you? Right now, Denise has just put a date out there of the twenty for the final pricing of the twenty fourth. We're as I said, April twenty fourth. Mm -hmm. That's right now, but I wouldn't call that a hard fast date. If by chance there was no way DFL could make that date, we would ask, "Can we do something?" I'm making this up now. Can we do something on the twenty sixth or the eighteenth so that everyone could participate? We haven't heard a blackout date yet. No, that, so far, so good. Yes, so not good. Good here, so. <laughs> And is this Our meeting day just in case anybody wants to know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So is this um, lovely? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this uh, something that um, do they have this throughout the year, and we've really just settled on April, or is this when the markets do this stuff? So, so right now. We wanted to see this time. It's no, historically, the spring is a good time to be out there. Right. As I mentioned before, by no means does that mean if on the, and I forget the first date, the 10th, if on the 10th, I'm making this up, but pricing comes in at 22 cents. Hey, I'm not going to sign that. I'm not going to tell you to sign that. So we'll probably hold off on final pricing. Market settles back in. I don't expect it to be a 22, just so you know. Right, but, uh, right. but, but if it happened, We'd cancel that and then we'd reconvene and say hey listen the markets come back down we'd like to set up a date making this up again june 9th okay and we can pick any date it, once the stacks are loaded at the suppliers they just have to you know they just have to run their process but we can pick any date There's so do suppliers do this every day of the year or do they multiple times every day yeah. that's okay. what they do is right. individual you just happen to have a tremendous load so right. they're interested i'm saying to you uh, they do this for an individual, uh, the, the city buildings. You mm -hmm. give them to a, a broker, the broker will take them, and they'll just bid that city building, and the, uh, you want this price? No, you don't You don't sign on. The next day, they could press you for you. Okay. I just wanted to understand the market itself. Oh, sure. Yeah, so good. That's why we're here. Anything well, else? No. <laughs> I'm, I was just, I know we got phone calls. People were ag agitated the last time, but now I'm really, Everything I've heard is thrilled. People are thrilled. So I think it worked out. I think it, I think it would be terrific if we could have, uh, when you have the numbers for like through the peak, so we can see how much we've saved, it would be wonderful for us to maybe a town meeting or someplace to be able to uh, right. crow a little about yeah. that. We should have those out by the end of the, of the month. We're on about a three month lag. Well, no, actually, that's only going to be through December, right? So, oh, If you'd like, yeah. I can project yeah. using last year's numbers. We already know what the basic service rates are and your rate. If you, I could make a projection using last year's numbers, the usage numbers, plug them in and say, this is the projected number that you're going to see for savings. And, and it will be substantial. Yeah, we can go out through June. Substantial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you're, you're more, they're more than double your price. Yeah. 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 Just if you want, we're happy to deliver that. I, I think I think it would be really good. 
I think it would be we can do that handout for our meeting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because there was a lot of discussion. You know, this was a big move. So well, no, we but do understand the lights are going out and all of those things and so forth. I went to a lot of meetings and I agreed with you. <laughs> and, and Ma and, and David really did a good job. Yeah, fantastic, so fantastic job. Yeah, but they answered a lot of phone calls. Our relationship too. with <laughs> Colonial has made like. Very easy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. you got all the calls. Yeah, you're right. They did get all the calls. Great right? Emmys. <laughs> and did we um, did we have as a community have a very low opt out rate? I mean, I don't normally I don't know yours off the top of my head. I can certainly get you the numbers though. That that's not a problem. But normally we see somewhere between uh, maybe nine and six percent of an opt out. Right. Normally, that's the case. Mm -hmm. I don't know what yours is. It doesn't is. stand no. out, so I'm assuming it was in the normal range. I have we have in our heads all the ones that were mm -hmm. <laughs> the community, so, you know, over ten percent. Yeah. Those stick in our heads. Those stick in our heads. We certainly have. Um, I know I have the email, and we can get that over to you, Casey, yeah. to be able to deliver the original opt out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. And I, I can. And some people had third party contracts already. Their their private, serve you know mm -hmm. suppliers. Right. So they didn't have to opt out they were never included right, right. at the start they, they could have you know tried to get out of those but right yeah. okay to, to give you an idea though i have the total meter count when it started in august of 20 total meters were 18 to 8 so 1828 and as of september it was uh 1,873. So, uh, you know, you had attrition of 50 uh, accounts that, that opted in since the beginning. Oh, oh that's pretty low. Yeah, they well, that's what I mean. Opted. People that were in it, they, they, they were happy with it. They yeah. opted in. That's correct. Yeah, you had op additional opt in. Mm -hmm. which and, and that's saying a lot. And the reason I'm saying that people move in uh, apartments, things like that, we do sweep from periodically, but th yeah. that, that's just, that's, that's impressive. Yeah. Good. So, I, I mean, just because I, sometimes monitor that phone, maybe not enough. Um, the, the, I'm the one who handles all the phone calls that people call in. And there were there was uh, some skepticism at the beginning, uh, you know. And as as people sort of real talk to neighbors and and then the prices started going up, we were getting more and more calls to opt in, how do I opt in? I've got a, this, I, I have a third party. How do I get out of that? So there were a lot of, there, there, there was, was sort of an ongoing regular all the way through the period yeah. of people calling and wanting to know information. Good. I Yeah. I had only gotten complaints, so. <laughs> until later. I'm sorry about until that. Late. No, no, no. We put the call Carolyn. Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> No, no that didn't. was just in the beginning because oh. people thought we were doing some kind of awful thing. And I said, no, it's just to save us money. And yeah, you know, your field down had some interesting comments at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Well, I most I, of which were not true. Right. And I, I think it was just misinformation and people didn't understand that yeah. th this was really to save save money. And yeah. and clearly when electric other people are paying 32 cents and we're still paying nine cents. It doesn't take, you don't need to be very good with math to see that. that <laughs> so this is a question you may or may not be able to answer, and it's not really directly germane to this, but residents in Deerfield who had um, interconnected solar arrays, for instance, does um, does their does their solar power that they put back into the grid become more valuable during high high stress times? So actually, it, it becomes more valuable for them. So... The way um, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah, net metering works. Um, it's a contract with the utility, and the utility always pays basic service. So, if you're using electricity and you're in Deerfield, you're paying nine cents. But right now, EverSource is is crediting your account for any kilowatt that you put on twenty two cents. So you get all of that benefit from a now. It could go just the opposite, right? The knife cuts both ways. If your rate was uh, uh, twelve cents and their rate went to nine, you'd be paying twelve and only getting nine. But, right. but what's been going on here the whole time has been uh, I'm getting a bigger credit than I'm at when I'm actually using. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good for solar array folks. Very to, good for solar to know. Today. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it should have been very beneficial. Good. Well, 
Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for coming and making the presentation. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I hope you know, I just wanted nice. you to say something. <laughs> thank you. I was pretty sure I couldn't say all of that. <laughs> Even close. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Emma and David, for coming. Thanks, Denise. Thanks, Mark. Thanks Sorry, for doing so much work. You know. Well, you know what? Actually, MA, MA, since you're here, we can jump down to um, the climate change fund. Um, so we could talk about that. Because um, MA is on uh, the MVP with us. Uh, Okay, so we're jumping down to the climate change. I don't, uh, was there something in the? Okay, thank you. I think it's called climate resiliency. Yeah, um, I don't, I'm having a hard time finding that here. Did you find anything? Um, flipping through. Casey, did you do you remember what you gave us? No, actually, Chris put it together. So, okay. Um, hey, Chris. I think it's yeah, I'm fine. here. <laughs> yes. Can Chris, you hear me? Yeah, yes. we can yes. hear you, Chris. Um. Did you put in the climate change proposal proposal that for the MVP that was the one of the items on the agenda? In other words, did we have I mean, I, no I, I didn't submit that agenda item. I think M MA was going to present the idea for um, creating a climate resiliency stabilization fund using um, solar oh, revenues. Just found it. Is it um, an email? Right here. Uh, you should have one from the Energy Committee too. That's what I. Yeah, that's what I have. It's yeah. from the. How far down was it? Mm -hmm. Um. This. This. Oh, here from, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I. I got the wording from the Energy Committee. Got the wording from Chris, so it should be very similar. Um, Chris Curtis. Yes. So it says at our recent. Um, meeting, the Deerfield Energy Bikini voted to recommend the creation of a climate resiliency stabilization fund, as had already been suggested by the town's municipal vulnerability project. We further recommended that 50% of the income to the town from alternative energy products be dedicated to this climate fund. Climate disruptions are already upsetting the uh, notions of normal. We have just had an extremely abnormal January. Given such changes, all we can truly anticipate is unanticipated expenses, whether directly from weather events or less indirect or less direct costs, such as coping with expanded um, ranges of insects. And I would add like pavement, <laughs> a life of pavement. Mm -hmm. our, growing alter, um, our growing alternative energy infrastructure is for the town a financial windfall from the need to adapt to climate change. It seems appropriate and prudent to set some of that windfall aside for those times when the windfall may be more literally meaning. We on the Energy Committee therefore join with the MVP in recommending that we set some funds aside for rainy days or droughts ahead by creating a climate stabilization fund. And this is from, oh, and then this is your letter too. I. I know that um, one of the things is is an issue for like Kevin um, in the highway department is that coming up with money to to do, to do the repairs for all these um, frequent storms that we get like culvert replacements and stuff. Kevin, I and and well, we talked about we had paid for a pavement management plan, and um, it was based on pavement being having X number of years. And because we have these warm weathers, they just, in the winter time, they, they break up. Mm -hmm. And so the lifespan of a, you know, roads or road pavements is not lasting. So we need to have a new evaluation of our pavement. And it's, you know, instead of 15 or 20 years, and then you pave again, it's, 
you know, it starts breaking up within a few seasons. Eight Kevin, to 10. Or patching. I don't know, Kevin, you can address some of this. Yeah, basically for, for paving be, because of uh, the re EPA requirements um, on how they had to reformulate um, the asphalt, it doesn't last as long as it used to. Um, basically, we're getting, like you said, something normally we'd get, you know, 12 to 15 years, you know, we'd be lucky if we get eight to 10. Um, so the only thing I, I, I do question a little bit or, or caution a little bit is um, just keep in the back of your mind that, that the monies that we get through our solar credits is what offsets our energy in all of our buildings. So if we utilize that money, just making it clear, if you utilize that money for some of that money, then tax money is going to have to be raised to cover the costs of the electric. I, I think right now, right now we're utilizing a lot of credit of, um, of uh, solar credits. I think, Kevin, what we were thinking of uh, when, when this recommendation was made was to um, for the solar field that's going to be on the landfill. Mm -hmm. and, no, that'd and be that, great. That'd be fantastic. Because that will hopefully generate cash. So mm -hmm. um, could I make a comment? Um, we put in alternative energy instead of solar because of the, I don't know what kind of income we get from the digester, but it should be. We don't get any. We don't, we don't get, get any from that? No, no. Ah, bummer. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. I thought, I thought really maybe solar it would be the just... same kind of situation where they would have to pay something. No, never mind. No nope. good idea. Um, so we'll take this under advisement. Uh, because I think it's something that uh, we need, would want to wait until Trevor's back. Okay. And and we got to think about what kind of money it would be, you know, generating stuff like that. But um, I think I, I'm 100% for this. I think it's a good idea because we, one of the problems with climate change, that's why we did creating resilient communities group and all these other things is that we can't afford the cost of climate change. Yeah. I mean, what Kevin just said sounds like it's a change in the makeup of the macadam. Well, some of that is true, but it's also just true that when you have it warmed up, yep. instead of being cold all through the winter, and then you have the frost and I, I'm um, just warming. It it sounds like that's very predictable. If he's saying we get ten years instead of fifteen now, well, but I I went to uh, you know at the MMA, we, I, you know this is a, an issue in my mind. And we, mm. when we talked to the highway people at the MMA, um, you know their their experience on, on the Cape is even less is less years than that, and that, that's why I say eight to ten. Kevin is saying ten, but you know yeah, I, eight, eight 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 to ten years. You know it's it's it varies. I mean, um, depends uh, on where it is, depends on, you know, if you've got a bunch of trees there, uh, you'd be lucky if you get five because the drift line goes down and, and just, it just gets it. I, I remember from Irene or whatever that hurricane was. 2011, <laughs> that, you know, roads washed out and things happened. But my, my own in, uh, goal with this fund is for you know, having something for those really big events where it's a surprise thing. And, oh, absolutely. But yeah. it's also, I was looking at this and the reason why I support it is because we have to come up with taxpayer matches, yeah. raise and appropriate if we're going to get grants for like the MVP, you know, the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program. Uh -huh. And, you know, some of those matches are 40%. Great. And yeah. it's really hard to do a project under five hundred thousand yeah. dollars. So, forty percent of five hundred thousand is a lot of money on for the taxpayers to come up with. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it may be that um, we ask Brenda, Brenda to do some analysis, but um, once the array is built, there'll be a lease every year, and so fifty percent of that lease money. Um, and I don't know if we get paid for actual pr production as well. Um, but that that could be a significant uh, number, and in a bad um, 
weather event that damages yeah. property and payment in lieu of taxes the pilot is based on production mm -hmm. but the but the lease money for the landfill right. is straight across right so a it's nope. not straight across it's the two things balance each other out so if one's high the other one's low and uh, vice versa okay. um, there is there is an interconnection uh -huh. between the two um, I don't remember all the details, but I remember talking yeah. it through with Beth I, Greenblatt. Yeah, and I haven't seen them, so I, is, oh, oh. I was just making that up. Is there? A <laughs> but, <that's, you> know, <laughs> but it depends on what we capture on the other right. Side. So that's the so. Basics. So is there a minimum payment? In other words, I can't remember off the top of because my head. Because there, that would imply there's a minimum payment if if the I production goes up, then the lease payment goes down. Um, but. Right. Yeah, and and that would be great if they're getting fifty five cents a you know kilowatt hour, and uh, you know there's no cap, and suddenly we're getting six hundred thousand a year, but I suspect that clever energy companies don't make those kind of agreements. <laughs> that was a long negotiation. <laughs> I think what what is also important here is that it would give Kevin, so you know it's one thing there was there was federal help mm -hmm. with Irene because it was declared <laughs> disaster. Yeah, but it, it's the regular events that we're experiencing. Yeah, um, two or three events every year that Kevin has to cope with. Yeah, and I think you know this fund would be excellent, and uh, it's a great idea. But I, I the I, demand for this fund will be much much greater than the income we get. <laughs> yes, and that's <laughs> and so bad. how that all balances out, I don't know. Um, but that's but, why. I think we need further discussion on that. I don't feel 100% yeah. comfortable voting, but yeah. I, I do support it. And I would say that, you know, one of the reasons why it makes sense, um, we're beginning to talk about stabilization funds for a lot of different things like um, DPW equipment stabilization fund, um, because if you let everything go into the general budget, then you use that money less, you think less about it, you just balance the budget and, uh, you know, try to mitigate tax, real estate tax rates. Um, and then you have a major problem and then, you know, you don't have any money to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a, an important discussion to have, but I do support the basic idea as well. And uh, um, what better use of renewable energy, but to help mitigate against the reason why, you know, we're having problems related to climate and change so yeah so thank you thank you i just wanted to catch you before yeah no thanks yeah. and then i see peter out here so peter come up we're going to jump down to transfer of old vault records to the valley memorial association we're going to try to solve part of this tonight bye thank you um, and I also, Peter, I did announce in our um, Slugman's announcements, your wonderful speech that I, um, oh. we're going to do on March 26th, and I'll be, I'm going to tape it to the door so that we can get lots of people coming. And will that one up on the wall back there, too. Mm -hmm. Good. And will that be recorded? Because yes. I'm going to be in California, so I won't have yep. the pleasure of attending in person. Jonathan, I guess, John is, oh, no, is it Marie? Marie Marie's going to do it. Too. Okay. April. Yeah, it's April. There's a, there's a, yeah. Pete, Peter's going to be doing one every month, which is lovely. So there's one, um, the, the one in April, um, Barb Matthews is going to do it on the poor. Uh, we'll have some throughout the rest of the year. It's great. Just as a comment on the last discussion, having worked for FEMA, one of the things that, even if there's a major event, the town still has to cost share the repair. So if you've got a fund that can be used for that purpose, uh, I know disasters are coming. <laughs> but, I know. It, uh, we're, we've actually been really lucky since Irene. We haven't. I mean, we've experienced them, and we've had, you know, but we haven't had millions of dollars of damage. We've had. Yeah, just hundreds we've just been times. lucky. We need to get a couple more Irene's and we'll be. I know. Um, anyway, um, I just got an email and I, I think uh, Casey got 
covered on it earlier from Tim Newman. So the PPMA Library Committee has voted you, Gene Solen uh, Solensky and uh, Richard Holmes, a subcommittee to officially and publicly represent PPMA communications with the town of Deerfield to collect all information necessary to create a contract with the town for the deposit of the town records in the old town vault in the library. Such a contract would have to be endorsed by the library committee and approved by the council to go into effect. I see that the issue of the town records is on the agenda for tonight's select board meeting. If you would like to attend and officially notify the town of our continued interest and questions that might be helpful to move things along. So, well, I put this on the agenda because I want, I was going to say, we're going to do a uh, vote, some kind of emergency transfer to get the records out of the 1888 building to PVMA so that, and then work out the details later only because I was so worried about spring coming. We got, you know, the grounds, I don't even know if it really got frozen this year, but we have melting snow, then we're going to have rain and damp. I know you've cleaned up at least half those records. You're about halfway through. Yep. Yeah, because we can't move them until you finish cleaning them. Well, that was the idea. I mean, there was some limited concern about the fact that, uh, you know, there might be mold and they didn't want to bring in moldy volumes into right, right. <laughs> existing stacks uh, and whatever. Um, what are you finding? I'm moving along. Hmm? What are you finding? Is it? I'm, I'm not really getting a, a sense of mold. There's uh, hundreds of years of grime on some of the, yeah. some of the books. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> I um, vacuumed up the room in there and uh, I'm working in there and I can go in for, you know, five or six hours. I'm not getting a sense that there's mold or any. Upstairs or downstairs? Downstairs. downstairs I'm really still not, filthy. not, I don't think that's a good idea, Peter. Well. I think they should be upstairs. Upstairs is filthy. They've got, they've Ups dropped the. So it's downstairs, but downstairs. No, is downstairs is down. clean. I, I, upstairs, they've dropped four panels in the ceiling. It's all covered with. Um, we had to. Well, I, I'm, I'm not saying you didn't have to, but it's all there. It's floating around. Nobody's cleaned it up. So, because we haven't been able to, but functionally, if there is mold down there, it can affect you physically. And I know this because it's actually affecting me. Well, so I. It, I'm not seeing any evidence of the mold down there. Um, cleaning up the volumes, um, it. Do you think you'll be yeah. able to, I mean, Peter, you've been doing this on a volunteer basis. I'm so thankful. I just want you to know, I appreciate it. And I'm not like asking you to do any more, any faster, but do you think you'll have the opportunity to finish before it gets warmer weather? Well, how much is before? Like well, I was going to ask the same thing. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm thinking like the snow being gone and, and you know, like 20s at night, it becomes like 30s. It it's, doesn't get below 32 at night, that kind of thing. And we're in the 50s during the day because that's the, well, I mean, the, 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 the seep the, of the water is what I worry about over there. It, it's hard to tell with that plug. I, 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 uh, have a gallon jug and a baster, and every time I go in, I empty the the well that the dehumidifier is dumping into. And every time I come back, it, the well is full, but it doesn't seem to overflow. Mm -hmm. And I think at some point it reaches a point where it's just psh, recycling mm -hmm. constantly. So, I've never seen but that. I've removed about a half a gallon's worth of water. The humidity is going down. It's not as high as it's too high given the recommended levels of humidity but it's coming down it's about 65 percent right now according to one gauge um the temperature in there is uh somewhere in the high 50s so but isn't that a reg relatively stable my experience was it was fairly stable i, I think it is i mean it's, it's not going i mean you know in, in the in the summertime, once you if you've got a lot of heat beating in there, it's going to go up and it's going to yeah. go down. No, it's staying pretty stable. Okay, that, that's good. a that's a good thing. Um, 
The other thing, uh, and Casey and I have been in communication uh, on some other things. There are records in there that I really don't think are town records. So one of the things I was- Those were the things you were- I, I was asking her initially, uh, I know there's assessors records in there. And she said, well, you ought to check with the assessors to see whether, um, you know, they have a need to go in there. So I saw the clerk the other uh, yesterday and I said, why don't you come over and see what's there? And so we went through it and, and she said, no, we never even, we don't, we wouldn't come in and look for these. So that's not an issue. I, my question right. was, okay, we've got a, we've got a sequence in there from the earliest volume was about 1790. And, but they go up into the 1960s. Yeah. So what I wanted to make sure is, well, do you, are there any records that you're likely to want to use? before we go carting them off somewhere. So that was the reason I asked right. you to talk. No, about and that's a perfectly good reason. I mean, it's, and I, I would, so anyway, I checked with her. The answer was no issue. Okay. So, but then the other thing that I just queried you on uh, was there's records in there from the water district and from the fire district. Yeah. And she said that they're different. Yeah, entities. technically they're different this, entities. This is in town. So that's that's the other question in there. Well, so How everything. How old are those records? Uh, they're 1900 to 1940 ish on one side. And I think on there's a stack of them on the right hand side that go into the 60s. So the districts were created by special legislation. And I don't remember the dates. But that's about the range you would see for certain business the districts did do. Um, that was the reason I said that because so, so um, we need to notify them that they have records. Then, well, that's why I that's why I had asked him. You know, I don't think those are ours, but definitely we let them know and say, look, we found these in one of the old vaults. Do you want them? I mean, there there are there's at least two or three shelves mm -hmm. of sequential year after year after year after year of bound volumes records. And all of the records that I've worked with so far, they're they're in bound books. Okay, so they did bind them. Okay. okay. But they were, I mean, they started them in bound books. It wasn't, it, it's not the, the binders that you put pages together. Yeah, no, it's the, it's the actually stick, yeah, volume, I know what you're talking about. Uh, you know. Okay. So anyway, um, there are those records. And then there are what are called chattel deeds, chattel mortgages. And these are cool as hell historically. Because what they do is a town clerk, every loan that was made between individuals, they'd come in and they would sign a mortgage. Basically, $8.54. But somebody would write down who's going to loan the money, who's going to get the money, and what they're putting up as collateral. That's pretty cool. Those mortgages reflect the economic underbelly of this community. And they begin in 1824 and go into the 1950s. TVMA is going to love that, aren't they? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it, it, I love it. Uh, I mean, it's the kind of record that I, I went online to see how common these were. I didn't even know what a chattel mortgage was. And I asked a couple of people, historians, you know what a chattel? No, never heard of them. But they were basically personal loans. Mm -hmm. Now, some That's of them are the kind of things, chattel I usually think of, well, if I go way back, it's slaves. Mm -hmm. It was women, wives, it was chattel. They were considered chattel at one yep. time, you know? So, but anyway, I'm thinking, well, they weren't selling wives and they weren't selling slaves up here. So, you know, what do we, what do we got? And um, so I started reading through some of these. Well, they're, some are absolutely simple. Uh, you know, I got to get $8.54 and I'm going to put on my milk cow. When they start getting into the hundreds, 
people are actually mortgaging every movable piece of furniture and wear in their houses. You know, the one chair, uh, one sedan, two feather beds, um, a stove, my sink, they're in there. So if you want inventories of what was actually in people's houses, we have an inventory when the hotel wanted a, mo uh, a loan, they put up all the plates and everything else in in the hotel, as well as the buggies and the sleighs in the garage. So anyway, it's it's a fabulous collection. Peter, we are we. I just want you to know. I I hate to cut you off, but we got a huge so agenda. So we're, we're. I I think basically, if you know, Tim said to me, "Well, okay, see what see what you can we can get worked out." So I'm perfectly willing. I don't think, you know couple of weeks, I'd have the place pretty much cleaned, the books. Well, and then by then we should have I the agreement like, finalized because you really do not want to do this without an agreement. We've lost records in the past, Carolyn. Uh, yeah, but Peter's saving our records, so I'm not worried about that. No, what I'm saying is, is before they get transferred, we need to have an agreement. And Tim Newman and I have been going back and forth because some of what we understood isn't necessarily what they understood. So yeah. that's well, why having I'm a group put a time be helpful. On it then, this needs to be resolved by our, our meeting on the 22nd. Would that be comfortable? Well, I, I, don't, I don't see that an agreement is a big deal. I, mean, I, I, don't I, I really think we know what we have. We know Council what the expectations are. We have are. to have an agreement because those are town records. Like you said, they're very important. Um, and the town has Casey. lost. Casey, I know, I understand, but PVMA already has our records and they are in a much better place up at PVMA than in our basement down here. So, so the 20, I, I, what, what, I what's the date, you, 7th? I, I don't see a problem with having something in place by the 22nd. Okay. I think we just need to know what Tim has and doesn't have. What, because that's part of the confusion. Well, what, it's not a climate controlled facility. There are several there's several things. No fault, Casey. It's a it's a, a library. Well, it's, it's not. It is now, climate. There's two things though. I mean, there's there's the open stacks part of the library. That's not where they're going. Right. They're going upstairs where the family papers are and the the old journals and so everything else. Clear. So I tell you what, as long as PBMA has created this committee, and I know both Gene and Rich real well, let me meet with them. As soon as I can, I'll figure out exactly what their concerns are. I don't see the, the, one of the concerns that came up is well, the town never loses custody of these records. They're not going to given to PVMA. They the town clerk retains custody of these records forever. They're just the town, the town records. Right. So basically, what we're looking at is an agreement for an off-site storage of town records. Right. The other question that comes in to it is how do we provide public access to those records if there's a query that somebody wants to see it? And I've told Tim twice how to do that. Hmm? I have told Tim twice how to do that. Well, I mean, there's- Without multiple... dissecting the public records law. Right, there's, there's multiple ways you can do it. But, but the accepted way that we do it is there's three different avenues. We are required to acknowledge any request. We are required to do that within a certain period of time. Yeah. We are required if there's an actual request for copies to give an estimate of what that's going to be and be paid before those records go out the door. And but the easiest way to do it is, oh, do you want to look at the records? Because if you do, you set up an appointment time, they go and look at the records. The only thing I would ask, and I didn't tell Tim this, is whoever's looking at the records be monitored um, so that something doesn't walk out the door. That actually yeah. has happened in here too. Well, the the and the they actually have a process in place where if new people come in, they have to sign in. What are you getting? What, yeah. What's your research? If they have that in process, it saves everybody time. So one one way to, well, I, I can think of multiple ways that that works. And, and 
if if that's the funnel, I don't see an issue. I mean, there is an existing form. I think I gave, I don't know if I, I gave them a packet at some point, but there's a form that the uh, town clerk in Hatfield has for people that come in and do genealogy and stuff like that and that wants to look at their records, mm -hmm. that which, which would be a simple thing. If they go through here, the, the other thing is if there's historians that come in and say, for example, there's the uh, uh, Deerfield fellows that come in in the summertime and they're looking for a historical project to do. Uh, well, these chattel records would be a perfect thing. I was gonna say. So do we know, do we need to go back through the town clerk to do something? So the town clerk for those specific records could write an authorization letter to Gene, who's the chief librarian saying for those records, Oh, you know, I give you the permission to um, access them for somebody who's doing historic research uh, ability to, to, you know, to let them do it. So, uh, frankly, I, I did that initially with Barbara. She, I said, I really want to see those records. And she said, well, fill out a slip of paper and, and uh, you know, I'll see if I get time to go over and, and get something yeah. over there. Well, that's that's the public meeting I, or the public records law. I guess that that was where it was. But if there's a form to fill out, then you have to fill out what do you want to see, why are you wanting to do it. It's, it's you know, and and you can tell it's it's legitimate. So somebody could fill that out here, and if the sign, town clerk signs off on it, take it up to the library, and you know, here's here's my permission. And we could you could actually make it easier. We do this. This happens a lot with us. Is send us a a request in an email and we'll respond to your request um, yeah. because an email is actually faster yeah. and it doesn't force people to have to come in. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is just one more thing. Um, if records are exi exist online, in other words, they've been scanned or, or, and I yeah. know taken you've done pictures a lot of that, Peter. Well, I guess you don't I actually have to do a response. You can just point them to the record. So, literally. I mean, basically anything that's online uh, anything I gave you is either digitally or it's in that mm -hmm. vault. So most people the, the, making the, queries about genealogy and whatever are never going to ask. That some drive that you yeah. um, brought in, yeah, uh, that we can we can link that on the website. Yeah, we can put that up on the website. Uh, that should be done, and then that alleviates a lot of stuff too. Well, it, it's going to alleviate ninety nine percent of the requests because right. that's the stuff that people are after it's not what i'm talking about no they're not going to look at all those valuation books um and that's actually the main gist of the public records law is put everything up online and you can just point people to where yeah. it is yeah so and the, and the it's very for, helpful yeah the thing for so our early I, public records and I, I i can give you a digital version of it but it's in there now. All of our vital statistics for the town up to 1850 are published. They're in a published book. So there's a copy in the safe, but I And most people walk up to the counter and say, hey, can I look at this? Yeah. And so we make sure that we sit them down so they have space to do it. But oftentimes it isn't, you don't, we don't even see a formal request in writing. Yeah. It's so, just, we want to monitor who's okay. walking. So I guess we can work that yeah. out. But I mean, in terms of, I, I, I need to, I, I want to go up stairs with gene and just say okay where are you gonna could i suggest that you take the pictures of wherever this stuff is yeah. going to be so we can just look at it i mean yeah. then you don't have to describe it to us we can just yeah. refer to the photograph this is where the files are going to be stored um and this is where they were yeah <laughs> and this is where they were and and i agree that um you know a space so, yeah. in a building is better than a space in a basement um, so the, the quicker we can get this organized and finished, you know, I, I, it needs to still has to finish. I it. think you it just, it, yeah. My guess is that it'll take me a half an hour to sit down with Gene and Rich and say, okay, what are your, what, what are your questions? Where are the things? Uh, Casey's got, you know, some, that's how we handle it. If there's a request in here. Okay. How do we, do we have to modify that at all to, Accommodate right. these? Well, Can we just use I, the I same process? Say we have to understand, you know, the limitations for PVMA, and that was what Tim. Yeah. You know, we have no vault. We, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. So I'm going to ask Casey to put this on the agenda 
for two weeks okay. and hopefully it will be resolved because I don't want it to go beyond that. And if it does, then I'm just going to have the records moved. I'm supportive of the records being moved and sort well, of continue the, to the, sort out the dilemma. The, the thing we need to be comfortable with and PBMA needs to be comfortable with is, is accepting it. And I think their acceptance of the records is going to be, oh, we know how this is going to work. And yes. I think that's that's the basic. Issue. Right. And, and, you know, it sounds to me like the policy already exists to access these public records. Yeah. You're not inventing anything. All you're doing is putting it in a different place and making sure from a legal standpoint that everybody understands what that means. Um, you know, and the reality is that they these records could be destroyed sitting where they are. So having them sit where they are because you're, you know, taking a lot of time to develop a legal document is, yeah. you know, is but I don't think it, problematic. There's no reason why it should take a lot of time. No, I mean, it should be easy to be done. And you need to identify the problems that PVME has with the proposal and find a solution to those problems yeah. and, and codify it and get it over with um, so we don't have to continue you know, talking about legal issues. So if, if I sit down with them and we kind of work out a, a document, I can come in and sit down with you. And we, well, you I don't can... want it to be that distant because I have to communicate directly with counsel. Um, what I really want to know is what PVMA, what their options are. Like, it, you know, because you reference certain things, we reference certain things in the agreement. And normally what would happen is somebody would come back with a red line and say, okay, we can't do this. We call it that. Um, here's my question about X. Um, and Tim didn't do that. So I really don't have a framework to say to counsel, oh, these are the things we need well, to change. Counsel, you know, my own design case because it was so onerous. So what we should probably do is let a lawyer talk to a lawyer. And I know PVMA has I, one. That's what I wanted. And PVMA's counsel should talk to our counsel and but say, it doesn't work that way. That's, I mean, the, the initial the initial contract was a good indication that they don't know anyway. So lack of they, communication, they, they, Well, it's... Because I didn't even know what to tell them because nobody gave me any information. So Donna could actually talk to Lisa and they could probably work it out in less than half an hour. I doubt it because they don't know how the whole operation works. It's not a document of I'm going to purchase something or I'm going to, it's not a standard thing. This is an agreement between That's two right. entities to hold documents and not bear any cost for them. And that's another part of it, a million dollars insurance policy. So there if has there, to be there, some if, sort of if, indemnification. If, there, if the town retains custody your insurance could should cover that it's an agreement. what happens if there's damage at pvma that the town has nothing to do with casey and no i understand i'm just trying to catch the legal but, the moment. but the, let, let, let's look at what we're talking about we're talking about a number of records that have no monetary value and they're one of a kind you can't replace them if they're gone and you can't replace them if they're stolen. And there's no, what, what are you going to, to get from the insurance company? They're not worth anything. And you're asking- You can't insure something that's worth nothing or very little and for a million dollars. And you're- And I told Tim that can be adjusted. Well, I mean- I told Tim that, but he didn't give me any answer, so- what I'm saying is, is if there is a requirement to have a legal agreement, we need to nail down what that looks like. And if it there, but they understand, Peter, there are certain legal clauses that have to be in any contract that the municipality. But I'm accepts. saying, Casey, that those records need to be preserved. And, and P Peter is putting in time cleaning them up so they can be moved. And if, if we can't move them before they get further damaged, I don't really care if there's an agreement or not. I will handshake deal to get them up to P PVMA where they will be safe. I am, and I am also against um, having any agreement that costs PVMA money. Additional insurance, like people, like Peter said, you got to have uh, the ability to have, to pay for, to, to, I mean, what is the insurance company going to give you? They will give you the price 
of a piece of paper that was lost. They will literally, because there is no his, there's no way to capture that historic. Value. So what you're saying is, is you don't actually care whether we have an agreement or not for town records. I care, but I care about the records more than I care about lawyers fighting back and forth. There aren't, and, they aren't fighting. We just don't have all the information to include in an agreement. Know, well, That's actually a really about, short. We've been talking about this all winter. How about how about you do this? I spent 20 years writing MOAs. Okay. For historic properties. Okay. I know how to write one. So I'll draft one after meeting with them, coming back to you, it'll lay it out. But if it doesn't have clauses we need to, then they're going to get at it. I'm sorry. It has to. We have to protect the town. It's not that I don't want to move them. It's that I just want everybody we're gonna, to be safe. We're going to talk about it in two so, weeks. So, yeah, let's, let's end this discussion right now and let's put it on the agenda for next week, mean, right. next week, uh, next, next meeting. meeting. Meanwhile, I don't have any objection to you making a member in an MOA, um, suggested MOA. And then we do really need to have PVMA agree to let their council talk to our council so that they can iron out these details. Right. There's any this questions. is not an insurmountable problem, and it's being, Absolutely not. you know, it's it's lack of communicate direct communication that's, right. that's stalled. Well, I don't, and I don't have a problem with that direction at all. But right. give it somebody directly to the lawyers when they still don't know. Right, because I'm not a lawyer. I don't know what has to be and so, doesn't have to be in this um, contract. All right, we'll 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 take it and we'll get some something done and we'll get it back to you and Peter I can't thank you enough because the records really are valuable yep and I I appreciate that there is historical significance that could get lost and I I again I want to thank you for all the work that you're doing to clean them well, up we finally get we should get in to get the use of records I mm -hmm. and you know another thing we might consider is those those research researchers who want to go over our chattels channel agreements and mortgages um that part of the agreement is that you digitize them <laughs> and provide electronic copies to well, the town i, I mean i don't know if they have the resources I well to. i'm i'm not saying i'm saying the researchers who come to pvma you know yeah, suggest that they digitize them. <laughs> not not pvma not any staff member of pvma yeah because that's but actual research researchers who care about this and who presumably are going to derive some sort of document or dissertation or other value value that's specific to them yeah. doing us a favor <laughs> just and a suggestion know, I mean, they might want to. You, you know what i mean i was just thinking about you're talking about paying for costs okay yeah. these aren't individual pieces of paper another oh, bound you, book you, right? you want bound book okay well we'll digitize it for you and it's going to cost you you know a couple hundred bucks and we reserve the right to keep the digital copy of it and we're going to add it to archives and you can have yours anyway it's, yeah it's thank you peter the the other the other thing that's great in there there's actually a volume you remember i don't know if you even know cheap side got lopped off from deerfield yep in 1896 there's yes. a single volume in there that lists every individual and their estate in Cheapside in the year that we lost Cheapside it was separated you want to find out what we lost it's in the book that's that's why I'm so concerned about it so thank you I'd be curious to see the chattel documents that yeah. really is fascinating chattel, yeah I mean it's there's some bizarre stuff we also have uh, the uh, incorporation records for the Russell Cutlery and uh, a company in Deerfield called the South Deerfield Machinery Company in 1850. I never even heard of it. But <laughs> see, this is what you're learning. No, it is. Now you're sharing with all. I mean, of I, I will probably. I, I shouldn't tell you this, but I should probably further along than I am right now because I keep reading. <laughs> That would be me. Things instead of anyway. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Have Peter, a good night. Thank you very much. Uh, next item on our agenda is declaration of surplus property, uh, the 2017 Ford Police Utility. Um, it's a transfer proposal. So the request was declare it surplus property and vote to transfer it between uh, the town of Deerfield and the fire and district, another governmental right? agency, South Deerfield Fire District. Yeah. For a thousand dollars, I think. Gosh, there's so much stuff in our packet. It's right here. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, I will make a motion to declare it surplus. 
and allow an intergovernmental transfer to the South Deerfield um, uh, Fire District. Or the sum of one thousand uh, dollars. It says here South Deer South County EMS, but I think it's South. I think mine said South Deerfield. Hold on. No, it's it's. Hold on. Um, I'm pretty sure oh. that it was South Deerfield. I thought it was South Deerfield Fire District. Hold on, let me check. Yeah, this is South Deerfield Fire District has expressed interest in purchasing the vehicle from the town. Um, we sold our last detail cruiser to Sunderland Highway Department for one thousand dollars. Doesn't specify. Oh, because I thought it said here. No, it is it is to the south. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, okay. He's just referencing that we sold the last one to Sunderland for a thousand. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't say how much we're transferring okay. this if it's a zero that, sum transfer. Yeah, as as long as there's a transfer between government so, agencies. Yes, that's all the motion was for okay. the transfer. I just wanted to make sure that we're my yeah. understanding was the South Deerfield Fire District. Yeah, so this is zero sum, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I'll second it. All right. All those in favor? Tim L G I. Carolyn Ness I. Okay. Oh, you made jump. Here, right. give me my paper back. <laughs> steal, I'm gonna steal my paper. I know. Um I got to get in shape here on this agenda. Um, Old Deerfield uh, sewer pipe replacement. Could I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, this was something that Trevor had asked me to put on. Could we put this off to the next meeting since Trevor's not here? Um, sure. I thought we had to vote to um, allow. I thought it was being replaced. I think they're Oh, Kevin, are you still on? I see him, but I don't see him. Um, um, yeah, I think there was some commitment, possibly of funding to do some pipe replacement in various areas that lead to the old Deerfield plant. But this is why I wasn't sure exactly okay. what to speak to. Okay. Um, and then I didn't, Trevor came in for about five minutes today and I didn't ask him because I forgot. Okay. I think I saw an email about the sum of five hundred thousand dollars. That's to what I thought. Replace I pipes connecting um, from the right South Deerfield plant underneath the road. Kevin, do we need to vote on anything on that South Deerfield? I mean, on the Old Deerfield sewer pipe replacement? You're not asking us to vote on anything, right? It's all I right. don't on. think so. Um, DA is supposed to be coming up. Well, we're going to be needing more money. Um, cause you're looking at, you know, 500,000 and correct me because it's bear with me. Cause I stepped out of the room, but 500,000 is what, what Deerfield Academy said that they'd be willing to give us. Yes. Yes. Okay. So with that being said, upgraded numbers is somewhere around 576,000. And then you've got another 89,000 in engineering fees. <clears throat> Plus we still have to, while it's open, uh, we got to drop a new water main in there too. Okay. So it's this so eventually eventually we're gonna be coming back and asking for more money. Okay. So you, in some so form or fashion. We're gonna put this off because we don't have a yeah, yeah. Uh, there's nothing nothing to vote on tonight. No, oh, sorry. Tonight. The other thing I before I forget is um a water water district wants to put in a new feed to the sewer once if you have that open because um Eric Meals had okay. said that he needs additional water. Yeah, that that's I thought that's what I just said. When we're when we're gonna have to put a new water main at the same time, because we're gonna put in right now they're feeding a two inch and it's a SDR twenty six, which is something that I haven't seen in God knows how long. It's a super thin uh plastic wall. You look at it and it snaps and it breaks. Um that's two inch and he wants more water flow. So we're looking at an HTPE uh four inch. So that way he should have more than enough flow. Already reached out to Deerfield Academy. We'll be able to tie into down by their their scoreboard <clears throat> as soon as construction season opens up a little bit. I already talked with Brett, and he's going to be moving over uh, a stub for us to go ahead and tie into for when we do get the project rolling. Okay, I just wanted to mention the pipe water pipe because um, I knew the sewer treatment plant wanted more water. So I, I want to add just ask a question that um, you know we may be going out to um, you know upgrade this this plant to. In the foreseeable future, and um, particularly the the pipe connections, et cetera, and the water pipe, um, if if there's a need for the water pipe for upkeep of the plant, it seems like it should be built into that bid. And 
um, rather than trying to come up with, you know, cash out of cash out of our pocket. Uh, you know, it should be part of a, a larger loan package. That seems to me, but um, I don't think the pipe can last. Right, Kevin? Well, well, here's the thing is, is, is you would, you would definitely want to lay in the new water main at the same time because otherwise you're going to be paying excavating costs. Oh, twice. absolutely. I understand. I understand um, that. I'm just saying, you know, and, and whether, whether you're going to do like a short term borrow or something like that, you know, the funding, you know, the funding that that's not on my end. Um, I just tell you what our needs are um, and our requirements. Um, so that's where we're at. So that, that would be can, that would our recommendation. Can you explain the, the, the sudden urgency of replacing this stretch of pipe? I mean, is this because well, of water infiltration? Is that what it is, or? Well, it's it's a combination of because you know three years ago. Sorry, because bear with me because I kind of lost the year. Three years ago, not even been four years ago now that we went through and um, videoed all of the sewer pipes in town, and right. this is one that we have the opportunity to have funding from others, Deerfield Academy, uh, because they're the ones they're the only person on that section of line. Um, so it, it, it comes to their benefit also that then that way they wouldn't have any issues on their end of getting rid of their sewer because now their sewer is all new and upgraded. Um, you know, when you're talking I and I, you know, I and I is going to be more of, well, like when you come down Eagle Brook, um, come down Pine Nook. I mean, I've seen some video in there. It looks like there's a faucet running in there. So, I mean, our infiltration rate between the two plants is like 56%. Um, so you know, it's going to take a long time. You know, we, we've got some pipe that we're trying to replace in, uh, in South Terrafield. Some of the stuff, some of the stuff you can line, some of the stuff has to be open cut. Um, and a majority of what has to be done in old Deerfield is open cut. Um, which again, comes to our advantage because now the trench is already open to lay in the water main. Yeah, it's no, I understand. Yep. I'm okay. just trying to understand, you know, this could have been done last year. It could have been done the year before. It could be done now. Could it be done when the plant is being renovated? I'm I'm just trying to understand why is it immediately that it has to be done? Well, this is this has been part of a process because they've already taken care of from the right um, what what's already been done between the line and the open cut coming down the hill. So right. they're just trying to fund that. And and to be honest with you, I mean. If if you're you're looking at a an eight hundred thousand dollar project and somebody's willing to give you five hundred grand, I mean, I'd find I have no grand. problem with that. Do you have money in your budget to fund the difference? No, but you know what? We're going to end up having to find the money someplace. I mean, you know, we 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 collectively now. I'm talking as as a resident. We collectively have to look at our our priorities on what we're spending our monies on. Um, in in my opinion, is, is infrastructure is where you need to keep your money. Your roadways, your water, your sewer, your drainage because that is what you live on a daily basis. The other things are, are that are brought upon us for paying for is more of luxuries, personal mm -hmm. opinion, sorry. No, that's okay. You I know I was supposed to say that in the first two minutes of the, of the meeting, but. Um, so we're gonna put this off till the next I mean? meeting anyway. Okay, so, yep. and that's, we'll get some more information on that. Um, the decision for the review is the Kaiser dog hearing. Um, Why so that's the this? draft that Alex Castro okay. prepared. Um, he just, he wants you guys to review it. And if it satisfies what you recall from the hearing, and if you want to go back and watch it. Um, I, it's what I remember. Yeah. So um, I just, feel, I wanted you to be, I had forgotten to give it to you before the last meeting. Um, um, so you know I what? apologize. I would um, like to put this off until... Um, the next meeting because Trevor. I want okay. Trevor to have input on this. Okay. Um, we do know that it probably would be scrutinized. So I think having all three of us read it and decide that we all are, that was mm -hmm. how we remember it would probably be better than just Tim and I. Are you comfortable? With yeah, that's that? fine. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda, since we did the trend, the records, is it opioid settlement contract signatory authorization? Um, you, is there any reason? Um, so here's what has to happen. I was at a 
info session that DLS did with us, the STAM group. Um, right. I want to say it was last week, but don't quote me. Um, and basically a contract signatory has to be authorized for the opioid settlements from Tiva, and there's several, I think there's five of them. So how does this impact us going together? Because, you know, I, I'm recommending from a board of health point of view that we pool our money with Greenfield, um, Montague, Shrewsbury, Levitt, and... You're going to have to have an agreement for that, but yeah. it, we don't get anything if we don't do the sig if we don't sign on. Okay. So, so what I wanted step. the board to do is either authorize somebody that I can then have them change the contract to. They sent me the contract documents and they sent them very similar to what they did with the library. So they sent them through that function of DocuSign, um, which means if we have to change something, I have to send it back to them. No, it's fine. If you're on there, I'm fine with that. I just want to make sure but that we can is, do that. Um, because we have a deadline of April, beginning of April. Right. And we have to, now the warrant article for town meeting. Has that been prepared? So the warrant article is a is a tickler. The issue is, is we have to create, the way I understand it, we have to create a stabilization fund for those monies. Yes, we do. So if you create a stabilization fund, first you create the fund, but then you have to vote the funds out of there. Right. Um, so that was right now they haven't changed it. And frankly, nobody expects the legislature to do that before we all start our town meetings. Okay. So I would uh, make a motion to have the op opioid settlement contract signatory authorization be you. Be Casey Warren. Yes. <laughs> I Chief will looking at me. <laughs> I will second that. Okay. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor. Daniel G. I. Carolyn Nassai. Okay. Thank you. I'll get on that tomorrow. Um, next item on the agenda is letter of support for South County Emergency Medical Services grant application to Homeland Security. Um, well, I I have no problem uh, sending a letter of support from the select board because obviously we support any kind of initiative to, um, you know, instead of taxpayers paying 150000 for the life packs that we get Homeland Security to do it. However, even though John Pachorek and myself both sit on the Homeland Security Council and we would, you know, be supportive, this doesn't fit what the Homeland Security um, money is to be spent for because it's regular equipment. But I have no problem sending the letter and then having the council not support it. Probably. I just so, want to say that there's a likelihood of support is for this is very low. Because it's, it's, it's regular equipment, right? It's regular Not equipment. a specialized piece right. of equipment. And it's, it would be precedent setting. Not only do we as a council have to approve it, then it goes to EOPS to be approved. And I cannot see EOPS approving this. But we could, you know, have have um, vote to have um, uh, and what happens if I abstain? <laughs> it's fine. No, I mean then it, it's a one o o vote. It doesn't doesn't know, go anywhere, right? Well, right. we can just have we can just have um, Chief Smith write up a letter and we can sign it. And we can put. It so what I'm it. saying, if I abstain, then oh. are we going to wait until Trevor comes back and and have you sign a letter that's going to have no effect? I mean, fine. I'll just uh, you know make a motion. I'll support it. Um, well, I think we should send in the letter, but I'm just saying the likelihood of success is not going to be good. Okay. Um, I appreciate the initiative. Um, I'll make a motion to support it. Um, I'll second a motion to support a letter presented by you know, Chief Smith. Um, all those in favor? Tim LGI. Apparently not sorry. Um, Just Casey have um, Zoe sent me a letter. A letter. Okay. And then uh, just use our stamps on it. Um, we have an appointment, uh, Gabby Richard Harrington is, um, put in a letter to say that she was interested in the Zoning Board of Appeals. And, um, so I'll entertain a motion, um, or any discussion. Do you want, why, why don't you make a motion, Tim? So then we yeah, I mean, that's fine. Um, and then we'll have discussion. Um, I make a motion to appoint, um, 
Yeah, be Richard Harrington to uh, the ZBA, the Zoning Board of Appeals. And I'll second that. And then I just like to read for the record um, her, her email. Um, Hello, I'm interested in volunteering for the Zoning Board of Appeals. I've lived in South Deerfield since 1986. I have an, been an educator for over 30 years. I'm interested in the future of our community and feel that I can help make a positive impact on this committee. I'm a good listener. I'm open-minded. I will read supplemental material and come prepared to meetings. Thursdays aren't great for me, so I'm interested in other times, but with enough notice, I can move things around. Thank you for your consideration. And Gabby. And uh, yeah, that Thursday is not set in stone. It's been what has traditionally been done, but uh, certainly um, new members do um, exist on the board. So it's a discussion for the committee. Um, well, I, I'm appreciative that we have one volunteer at least. So I <laughs> will entertain. Did you things. second it? Yeah. Tim Hill GI. Carolyn Nessa. I think we should just move ahead with that. That's wonderful. Um, Casey, can you just please remind her that she needs to go to the town clerk to um, be sworn in? Be sworn in before mm -hmm. any. I know that the zoning board has a, a meeting and that they're, um, I know Bob Decker I think they have said a that there was, yeah. might not even have a quorum. So um, just let, if you could let Gabby know because the, the town hall closes at four o'clock. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can do that. Thank you. Um, town Ministry's report, or well, mail. Now there's um, a employment policies. We're going to discuss um, appointment policies. Um, oh, employment policies. No, appointment policies. Appointment. Oh, it was an oh. email that uh, I'm sorry. Tim had sent out. Yes, General, I'm sorry. I was trying to get through the meeting here. No, um, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Let me find that email, Tim. Why don't you get started on that? No, just um, <clears throat> so as we, I think it was the previous meeting we started discussing, um, well, we discussed this on numerous occasions, but the idea of um, setting a policy that uh, town employees shouldn't be appointed to boards. And uh, we had some back and forth discussion about um, which boards and whether it should be uni universal or um, whether ex officio participation would be, um, you know, uh, an acceptable situation. And uh, so I just wanted to continue the discussion and hopefully, you know, make a decision on this so um, we can adopt a policy. Well, uh, you know, I have already said that I was supportive of. Um, regulatory boards having no town employees on regulatory boards because of the legal implications um, of any decisions. And, and you know, I took that on board and then I started thinking, well, um, you know, things like the personnel board are appointed, the finance committee is appointed, um, the conservation commission is appointed, um, and um, I don't well, know. I would see the Conservation Commission as regulatory, though. Oh, absolutely. I'm, but I'm saying the Finance Committee, you, for instance, you wouldn't want a town employee. Um, well, they could conceivably recuse themselves when you're talking about what their pay is going to be. Um, but in the long run, we don't know what future boards there may be. And um, whereas drawing Actually, on drawing yeah. on the expertise of of somebody like Brenda for. Um, you know, a discussion of financial implications of, you know, uh, a planning board policy seems perfectly logical. But if Brenda were a resident, you know, I'm not certain that, well, that's a that's an elective office. So I, I'm only speaking in the terms of if, if somebody leaves the planning board and you need to fill a vacancy, you know, I believe that it would be better for the town if it would, was filled with somebody who doesn't work and be paid by the town. So I don't know I what you're... I actually thought about um, like the finance committee does make recommendations that I, I was thinking of regulatory boards, but um, that does make sense. I I feel it, it's really important. I mean, like Casey or John Pachorik or Kevin, having them participate like in our MVP program is, ex, ex, is often I participate as ex officio members. Like 
I'm an ex officio member of personnel board, which means I don't vote, but aren't you a, of the CIT too, too? Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. And in, and in fact, uh, Casey's probably uh, the person who would be most often an ex officio, probably Kevin has the, the most ex officio participation. I was just say Kevin yeah. is on a lot of, yeah. and, and so is John Pichor. I mean, yeah. the huge benefit right. added. It, it absolutely and and you know there's no Brenda. there's no question that um you know drawing on the expertise of our employees is is a, a net positive um i'm i i just have a problem with the you know um ex, ex, you know having voting authority on anything uh, and being a town employee i i just think it creates you know I think how much energy we're spending on making sure that the uh, transfer of town records is 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 you know, in the best interest of the town. And um, I can't, I, I can't imagine anything, or I, I wouldn't want to propose any particular problem that might arise, but I, I'm sure there's some legal issues that mm -hmm. could back, come back to bite the town. Well, um, my thought was maybe um, we don't have a, a draft policy per se. Um, well, I'd like it to might be worthwhile one. to talk to council and she, see if I'd she like to has those one. I, I, I actually took the effort to to write up something that I think meets the needs. But um, so I'm going to read what I've written. I haven't shared it with anyone. Um, uh, so this is the draft I came up with, and I'll happily send it along. Town of Deerfield appointment policy. It shall be the policy of the town of Deerfield that no municipal uh, employee shall be appointed to any municipal board committee or other governmental commission. This policy shall govern all, govern all those with appointing authority, including but not limited to the select board and the town moderator and any other official with appointing authority. This policy, however, shall not bar municipal employees from serving in an ex officio capacity or being consulted by any municipal body. I, actually, I really like that. I think that's fairly clear. And um, you know, I, I would I would be happy to adopt this tonight and submit it to you know Lisa and have her suggested amendments. Uh, but I do think we're coming into appointing season, and I'd just like to get this out of the way so it's uh, it's clear to people who want to yeah. volunteer for these things. Obviously, it has no effect on uh, town employees' ability to run for office because that's governed by state law. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. So, do you want to make a motion? I, you want to make a motion? I will make a motion to propose your language, and uh, but I would also propose that we send it to um, Lisa, our, our legal for legal final vetting. Yeah, vetting. Uh, I'll second the motion. All right. Any more discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Carolyn, that's aye. Thank you, Tim, for doing that. That was a um, was really good. Made me think about what I my position. Um, Casey, you, the placeholder was for uh, employment policies, right? You don't have you don't have anything. I didn't have anything for this. Okay, time. so Tim, um, we have mail. Can Is I butt any... in real quick, Carolyn? Uh, what? Uh, can I just butt in real quick, uh, just to do a little plug about uh, the food safety uh, course that we're doing on Friday. Um, if anyone is uh, interested, um, do you have, how many slots do you have available? Um, I got about 10 available. Okay. So, um, if anyone is interested, you know, just contact you or me and, um, I'll register you and, um, you guys should be good to go. So, okay. Awesome. Just make sure you, um, you should probably send an email to all our permit holders. Yes. Yep. I already did. Yep. Okay. Just a reminder that the course is, is going to be next week. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Um, the mail is, uh, we got the, uh, from Comcast and from, um, this is, I think it's a rate change, isn't it? Yeah. And this is a request to acquire a piece of land, what you're looking at, yeah. Carolyn. Um, I 
Do we know um, how much taxes it gets right now? I don't actually. Um, I wanted you to see it first because I haven't seen very many of these come across our desks. It looks like it's contiguous to other land that's owned by that the state owns near Hobby Road. I think I think it's in the already. Um, I think it's already been done too. Uh, well, the piece, the parcel itself, I forget what color it's in, but the the parcel is relatively small, but contiguous to that is other land that. I believe the Commonwealth owns, which which means it's not an unusual request on their part. And often that's what you want to see is contiguous preservation. All right. Um, but I don't know what the answer is. So I wanted you to see it as mail and maybe we put it on the next agenda. Well, I, I think this is probably already in the process of being purchased, but it is, it, this is just a notification to me. This is just a written notice of um, Department of Fish and Wildlife's interest in acquiring interest in the land. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sure it's 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 going to get done before June thirtieth. So, um, that's good. It's good to know about it. Um, make sure that's on our pilot list. <laughs> it's I had that thought. Like, wait a minute. Um, make sure that gets updated. Um, and not and not to move away from the um, mail just yet, but um, how how well I'll wait to your administrator's report. Um, this is about uh, the bridge project. Yes. Okay. And then the other one is I believe it's the bridge over one sixteen, right? And right and um, four hundred thousand for. I mean, 400 million from chapter 90. Kevin, do you know what that means for us? It's about 383,000. Yeah. Which I think is. No, that that's based on the 200 million. Do you know, okay. do you know we're going to get double that this year, potentially? No. Uh, well, there was a, a meeting on Capitol Hill uh, two days ago that they were asking, instead of 200 million, they were asking for 325 million. Uh, for two years. Where that went, I have no idea. Um, but just to give you a real quick ballpark idea, that that's, um, that's uh, how much is that? 800 and what? 824? Uh, no, the, well, the, the um, number's in there. The it's, it's, governor applied for, um, submitted a bill for 400 million. Right, the, no, keep going. Okay. Oh, never mind. Certified <laughs> Different document. 200 million, which has been Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. Because right now with the monies that that we did or we were told that we are going to be getting um, basically provides three miles of road. Yeah, right. It's, um, isn't that the three hundred eighty three thousand three hundred eighty three thousand four hundred seventy three dollars is based on two hundred million. Correct. Being. OK. Correct. Yeah. That's and if they give us more, hey, the more the merrier, because God knows okay. we need it. All right. Um, Help us with more roads. Okay. Um, Town Administrator's report. Thank you, Kevin. Town Administrator's report. Um, Casey, I just wanted to make sure before I forget, um, have you submitted to Lisa down at DLS the waiver request? Chris is actually finishing that up. Um, he was working on it this afternoon. Okay. Um, he's, got, he's got the email half written. <laughs> I've okay. compiled all the data and I am just in the middle of sending an email explaining everything so that I don't just dump a bunch of data on her. Um, I was hoping to get it out this afternoon. I just ran out of time before I had to run home and run Chris, this meeting. Fine. I'm just thrilled to death you're going to get out tomorrow because we've got to get it in before mm -hmm. the final budgets. The House 2, you know, they're starting to negotiation and sure. uh, we've got to get our waiver in so that, um, you know, they can waive. What we're asking for is is uh, um, uh, I think the combined frontier and elementary school is going to be about three hundred thousand, and so we need that to sort out before our budget process goes. Because I think it's one hundred and forty eight thousand less at the elementary yes. school right now. 
So we got to get this done because right. this is yeah. this will definitely impact how our budget is going to be at the mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks. I so, think so. Um, when we talked to Lisa at the MMA, because Denise was with me, mm -hmm. she um, Lisa said that she would walk it over to to the Department of Education, and Mindy is the one. I don't know the person's last name, but Mindy is the one that will be granting us the waiver again. Mm -hmm. So make sure, Chris, you send this to Lisa and then you follow up with a phone call, okay? She's got to tell me who I need to follow up with in terms of, no, no, no. unless follow it's up to Lisa. not Lisa. I'm talking for you to, when Chris sends this off tomorrow, just make sure by hopefully in the morning, mm -hmm. you, by the afternoon, just set, make sure you call her and, and let her know that Chris had sent it off was there any, do you need any additional information or any additional information help so that she can carry it over to Mindy? Okay. Because mm -hmm. that's what she told me she was going to do. All right. Thank you. Make sure I'm CC'd on this too. Yeah. And I, I'd like to see just for educational purposes, because if Carolyn ever decides to not pursue this anymore. Somebody else is going to have to, obviously. <laughs> well, they delayed it one year, so this will be the third request. But I'm, I'm, as my concern was before, this is a manual. Right. We we reach out every year, mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. you know this is based on personal relationship, and it's make making me really nervous. I want I want to make sure we can try to do some kind of permanent. That's actually might not be a bad question for Joe and Natalie. No, we don't want to make it too public because we get this waiver. Everybody else and his brother is going to get a waiver. Oh, no, but I mean, after the fact, if we get it, let's see what. Well, honestly, it's a school formula. Lisa, and see, how do we make this more streamlined? Let's start with that conversation. Okay. Sounds like a recipe for not getting our waiver one year. No, but that's why we, we do that after we send it. Yeah, I mean, we, we should get this waiver and then we should figure out how to make it permanent so we don't have to do this every year. I know, I know, but I meant yeah. we need to make sure that we're working with Lisa before she retires. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's, she's, yeah, she's, and we've, we've that's been the case in the past three years? No, three years? this is the third year because they delayed it a year. Right. And, but we talked to her in 2020. So yes, this will I be, remember that. This will be the fourth budget year. But they delayed it a year, so it didn't impact us for, for because of COVID. COVID, yeah. So, but it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, but there's some. I wish there was a permanent mechanism for it because it really it's a lot of work to for Lisa to... for us everybody. Yeah, but why can't you use the same information? I don't understand why we have to. Like the zip code, the addresses on the zip code. We should be able to, that's the same street addresses. It is, but you don't know. Like when we sit and look at what we, what's in Wheatley, I have a basic idea, but postmasters don't confirm that. They won't. They refuse. Yeah, I know, but the, what we've submitted, this is the third time we've submitted this waiver. And so. we use some of that information to start with. What we were trying to do is nail down a little more of Wheatley. Um, we che I remember Chris checked with Karen about the um, anything that came off the tax rolls through a purchase in Old Deerfield, um, but you have to review their land. Oh yes, just so I we know. send accurate information. Right. Well, they added two more houses this year, so there should be two more addresses. Yep. Okay. Yep. I, I added the additional ones that have been taken off of the tax rolls this year um, in the O one three four two zip code. Um, in the 01373, um, I ended up creating another book of, I got a list of every single parcel in Waitley um, because I wasn't sure what was included in the previous data and what wasn't. And I was able to go through with a highlighter and through the 97 pages, I highlighted which ones have uh, South Deerfield postal addresses. And I realized through doing that, that some of them might not be owner occupied. So I made a special spreadsheet of those that were owner occupied and have South Deerfield postal addresses, but physical locations in the town of Waitley. Perfect. Perfect. Chris, thank you. I think if sure. you can figure out a way to make it updatable easily or easier, that's perfect. 
And then we can just update the list because you have all in all the nonprofits from the O one C four. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Perfect. It wasn't just one group, it was all of them. All of them. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Because it's critical because this is income based attached to those assets. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, anything else? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I nope. wanted to make sure this was critical. Um, when you had said something to me about it when I saw you after work yesterday. So I checked in with Chris this morning and okay. let him know. I knew he was working on some of the Wheatley stuff. So putting it into some form of a spreadsheet is going to make it easier for okay. us. But again, that comes with the workload of doing the data inputs. Thank you though, Chris. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Chris has done a great job on that. All right. Um, Thank you. You paid for your salary. So the last, I, it. I, I was afraid this was going to happen when I did my first um, report, written report, I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to keep up with it. I have two items that require a lot of uh, time to regurgitate the details. So I've been finishing that up. Um, essentially, we're talking about status on the 1888 building, status on the 18, 1821 building. Um, Tim and Denise individually have talked to me about the earmark work that we need to get done um, and submitted to all of our federal representation, McGovern, Markey, and Warren, because we did get the 24 guidance from, I think it was Markey's office. Um, and I think I had mentioned that Chris and I had talked to Kobe down in Congressman McGovern's office about what an earmark process was. So we have that information. We have a short time frame. Tim's done the, the lion's share of that. Denise and I had a conversation today about it as it relates to a shovel-ready product. And that was Kobe's best advice was it really should be shovel-ready. So those are some of the nuances, I think, based on what I read of what Tim has written. I think we're as close as we're going to get for the 1888 building. Um, in terms of the 1821 building, which is the Congregational Church, um, John had worked with the asbestos removal people. They were here today doing work in the church. Um, but there is an issue with the church, and it relates to Founders Day. Um, the sanctuary area that leads up to the steeple does not have an occupancy permit because it's because of the balcony issue, I think there's a balcony issue, but also the roof issue. Um, it's, you, you can't safely give it an occupancy permit. So I'm very concerned. I don't think anybody should be trooping through there. Okay, I'll bring, uh, we have a- And I can call Peter and talk to him, but- Chris Harris is on the line, is yep. up here. We have a meeting on Monday. So that's what um, said. I will make sure we bring it up that there's no occupancy permit over there. And while I think it's, very interesting from a historical perspective. Um, maybe some pictures. And I I know you want kids to really be engaged in this because when I was these kids' ages, I would have loved that. But it from a safety perspective, just like I said to Peter earlier, I'm more concerned about pe people being safe um, because that's really we want to protect our residents and you know, there's so much information that Peter has about that church and he shared that with the 350th. So I did, I wanted to make sure that I checked in because I seem, I recalled from a while ago, the only, the only things we've been really doing, and I don't know if Kevin remembers, but we've had the engineers walk through there a couple of times. We've walked through there. I know Tim was there. Uh, we've walked through there to evaluate certain areas of the building, both Fellowship Hall and the sanctuary. So we were trying to make sure that we could prepare to be able to do some of the repairs. And we do have a quote. Um, I think Julie has some, Julie's out of town right now, but I think Julie has some, she's mentioned to me, she has some ideas about what we should attack first. Um, we're going to do the steeple, I hope. Well, we've there's, it's called, it's called relish. Uh, the relish repair is, is I think the key piece of repairs to the roof okay. to stabilize, which actually will help the steeple. 
Okay. But it's not specifically the steeple. Okay. I just want to make sure it doesn't tilt anymore. And what we had done was when we did the request for quotes, we said, okay, um, these are the main, this is the main thing we want done, but these are the options we would like to see pricing for. Okay. And that sort of informs your decision about what you want to approach. So that's been going on. We also have been working through, like Chris has been working through some of the um, school stuff, but I've been working with um, Brenda and some of the other department heads on some key budget pieces. We're presenting, our budget gets presented next Monday at the finance committee meeting on the 13th. So there's some tweaky things on a couple of the budgets, depending on what the elementary school comes in with. And so I think the elementary school's public meeting on this is tomorrow. Yeah. Um, because I, I think you would mention that you need the link to get onto that meeting. Um, Trevor did confirm to me that the school committee voted last night for the frontier regional school budget. So we had those numbers plugged in, right? We had a, a percentage calculation in ours, in our reporting budget, um, Excel spread, Excel workbooks. Um, but we're going to be curious to see what Brenda and I will be curious to see what actually comes in from the elementary school. So we've been monitoring that and just discussing, you know, it's been a, it, it's already a tight budget year. So we're just concerned. We want to be prepared um, to talk these things through with you and the finance committee. Uh, Capital had a meeting this week and basically went over the ambulance asks. So the ambulance capital requests. Um, and Carolyn was at that meeting. It was relatively short because it was really focused on the ambulance. They have two more meetings. One's next week on the 14th and one's on the 16th. Uh, well, it was, it was to, um, you know, because the, the goo had voted to do the life packs mm -hmm. three. And so it's 150,000. Right. But it was to use, set aside that money as Tim knows. Because, um, you know, there was there, it's eight years, we're into eight years of a 10 year lifespan, and it's um, at about 14 months before we can purchase. You know, we have to get in line, right? So right, we have the money in cap in our capital reserves, so it makes sense to have um, so we can build paramedics, so we can save people's lives. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to put that equipment online. Um, and vote for it now, and which is what we did. But um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to replace the ambulance through the USDA program. Fingers crossed. I think hope for the hope for the best and prepare for the worst. So you know that did get discussed. Um, I believe that mm, the it's the intent of the committee to start prioritizing next e next week. And yeah. they will plan additional meetings to get us to uh, the end of next. March so that they can submit to right. the select board and finance committee and discuss the capital. We have a meeting next Tuesday. Right. And I think we have one on Thursday as well. Yes. The 16th. So I think Mark wants to settle a meeting for not less than the week of the 20th and possibly that next week so that we can be ready to present um, a prioritized list to select board and finance. And he mentioned that on at the meeting this week. So I think we're in good shape in terms of capital progressing. Um, and I have to say, it's been a, a pretty streamlined process. Um, I just want you to share with um, the capital committee that um, Massachusetts under the USDA grants that you're talking about has a total of 300,000 a year to award. So you're not probably going to get 250,000 for an ambulance. You're going to no, get some maybe portion get of 50,000. Yeah. Well, so you got two, not too long ago. Yeah. yeah. That was because there was surplus money left they over. They found and, extra money. And they had to spend it. Well, we're hoping that yeah. September 30th, they'll have extra money. Yeah. Fingers crossed. I know, right? <laughs> um, and there's also the iron money coming, you know, the, um, which we'll be well prepared to apply for because we, have a planner, grant writer, administrator in our new budget. <laughs> okay. Just saying. 
So, so those types of things are, are taking up a lot of airspace. And I have to say that Brent has been a complete trooper um, because this, this budget process up to now has been pretty complicated. So we'll see what happens as we move further ahead. I, because Julie isn't here, I don't really know uh, what her thoughts are in terms of town meeting. So I, I don't know if you recall town meeting, she had come in and said something to the board about, uh, or sent an email and said and asked the board to consider. I think I think it's going to depend on. It's going to depend. So we can open. I think my thought. This is just my thought. Um, if you start town meeting, worst comes to worst, you continue it um, because town meeting and the election are tied together. So we can be prepared as we can be. There's nothing to say you can't go back and fix the budget later. We've done it before. So it's just, I don't want to lose out on that, that time frame to get other things done on the warrant. Yeah. Well, it depends on how fast we get our waiver, I think, for the, that's going to have an impact. And okay. so Lisa's going to walk that over to Mindy and hopefully Lisa will get back to us in terms of what, what kind of time frame we're looking at. I know, but um, we won't know for sure what our, what our final numbers are until house two happens and. Who knows when it's going to be? Right now, it looks like April. So, you know what's funny? Usually, they don't come back until the sort of the mid end of April. But They're moving pretty. I mean, there's a, negotiations are going good. pretty good. Good. So we'll see. Uh, um, and there was one other thing. The uh, oh crap! I hate that. Something flies out of my head. Okay, you talk to me, and I'll shut up. <laughs> no, but. Uh, from what I understand that they they want final yeah. numbers the beginning of April for because they hope to get done by mid-April. Final numbers for what? For this is a soil health um, line item. We're trying to come up, the state commission is trying to come up with a budget. This is brand new. Mm -hmm. so, is that conservation district stuff? Uh, this is state commission for water, soil, and oh, related okay. resources that I'm on. We're in charge of implementing the healthy soils state program mm -hmm. so we're kind of trying to come up with a budget and they want the final figures somewhere around april beginning of april so that they can give us while you're thinking about what you forgot um just going to say two words mvp contract <laughs> yes i know i sent it off i'm waiting to hear back i actually have a conversation with lisa tomorrow i have an appointment with her thank you um so one thing i want to warn people about as it's been in, it's been part of many conversations that are revolve around the budget. Smith Volk, we don't have a number from Smith Volk. Smith Volk typically doesn't give us a number until after April first. They may be subject to the same concerns. They may be concerned in the same way that Darius is about the governor's budget and sort of where everything's going to settle before they set a number for tuition and uh, special education costs. So that's an element of that budget that is not completely kids, firm at this point. How many kids are going down there now? Right now, I think we have two. Usually they don't say anything until after April 1st because that's the deadline to apply. Okay. All right. And I know that's always a concern because of the cost. And we are following up to make yes. sure that the kids I'm are waiting not for the, the lady program. at the at GOC to give me to respond to me. Okay. Yeah. And it's, I know why she hasn't because they're waiting for that April 1st deadline. So we do the best we can. And that's, no, that's what no, brought I'm that I'm talking about confirming that the students that are there, that I we have are to already chase paying. them for that. Yeah. I just want to make I sure. I have to chase them. Because we've had in the past kids change programs, which is fine. I usually check to make sure they're in the same program. required to pay for them if they change the program and it's available somewhere else. Right. So, I mean, if they choose to stay there, that's fine. But we're not paying for a full tuition plus transportation. So usually I check that. I am waiting for them to get back to me with the um, student count. Okay. All right. So just for Tim's edification, the students that apply to go to tech or Vogue, in this case Vogue, um, have to get approval from their super, their sending superintendent and then approval from the school itself. And then 
we ha- usually have to chase them to find out what the number's going to be um, because the town is required to pay for the tuition, transportation, and actual uh, special education costs. That used to be different. They've changed it. So we just try to keep up with them two or three times a year to make sure that we have the same information they do. It's significant. So mm-hmm. It is. It's it's pretty hefty to send us not. Yeah, I remember that one person applied there and then didn't go and uh, that that's the most recent discussion i remember hearing about we've so had, over the years we've had a couple kids that went there for a certain program and then changed programs and which is fine but they can't we don't are not required to pay for programs that are offered at mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah so and there are times that you get i just want everybody to realize this just because you have an april 1st deadline to apply doesn't mean it's a hard and fast date. If you have a kid that comes in in the summer and wants to go to Smith Folk and gets approved to do that, we have to pick that cost up mm-hmm. if it's one of the programs that Smith offers that tech does not. So it can you can have a change in that budget um, without knowing it's going to come. It's going to hit. It'll hit you yeah, after you've already budgeted. So yeah. sometimes we have to make adjustments. Okay. Um, is there anything else? Mm-mm. Okay. Um, there is, but I was going to try to put it in that written report. <laughs> Good. Uh, uh, one one other question oh, sure. that relates to the 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 sewer work. I uh, in future times uh, would something like this water main request be something that the enterprise fund could pay for? I mean, there's probably no real money in the enterprise fund right now, so um, I'm just looking for funding sources for that sort of regular. Um, because it does make sense to put the water water main in at the same time you do the work. I perfectly understand that i just you know well the the reason number one we would want the water main to be replaced is because as kevin says it's oh yeah it's only two inch and it's really yeah it makes perfect sense um you know it's brittle plastic but the um i guess eric mills was at the sewer treatment plant and he really needs that extra he needs pressure yeah yeah so no i'm I'm just and so it's cheaper when it's open did yeah, I have no question about that. I was just saying that the enterprise fund would be the normal source mechanism for paying for that in the future. Yeah. Well, yeah. we were hoping to get it all completely covered by Deerfield Academy, but because they had replaced the other pipe, they wanted us to replace it at a certain time so it was not disruptive to their um, school schedule. Yeah. So we agreed to do that if they paid for it. And so this is sort of continuing it on. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm only speaking about the, the portion that's not factored in i mean the holes dug makes sense to put the pipe in um and uh you know yeah. if the enterprise fund had money it would make sense to pay for it out of that right. um, um if you can get retain build retained earnings up a bit you can do that yeah. um i do know that usda wants to see a certain amount in our retained earnings as it's tied to the loans right so that that is a factor Right, because uh, you know we only generate a certain amount of retained um, earnings from our sewer uh, billing. Right, and then that's something we need to keep. You know, sewer commissioners need to keep in mind as we go forward when we set the next rates. Um, you know, we're a, you know the town residents are paying twenty five percent of the cost of this thing, and so you know we need to keep that ratio in mind when we set the rates because we can't let it slip to the general fund for expenses that are tied to the sewer. Mm, that's that's a very good point. Then. Yep, it is. Um, un- items unanticipated, just last item here, is written testimony for local and school aid. Um, I just was hoping, Casey, that we could submit something to um, the public hearing, uh, or the there is... Um, I think Joe is doing it down at U- UMass on Monday. Yep. And we would need some information from Darius. But, you know, unfortunately, we're not eligible for the rural aid that, you know, that you read in the newspapers. Right. Rural aid's coming. We get 30 bucks a kid. It's 18000 I mean, it's not even $19,000. So we get basically enough to pay for one one kid's cost of education. It's $30 a student. 
does nothing. And, and whoopee, they increase our aid to $60 a student. So we get $36,000 $36, a year. Great. Not very much. Mm -mm, it's not. So it's ridiculous. So we need to say that this is not doing us any favors. This is not keeping current. This is not increasing your percentage. You're falling every year. It's falling behind in their percentage. The state is providing to, to us as the cost of educating these kids. I mean, we're just under 20,000 for cost of a kid. Yeah. Regular ed, not, not, not I'm talking about special ed, regular ed. And they're, and they're giving us $30 a kid. We need to write this letter of, and, and put that in testimony. I, I have five meetings that day. Otherwise I would go and testify, but I, I just can't. Two of them are select meetings, select board meetings. So I, I, I just, I can't. No, I, I hear but, you. But My question is, are something. you asking me to write the letter? Well, I'm asking, I think the town, four town administrators have got to submit something from the Frontier School District, meaning 38. And, and we can write, I mean, look at Sunderland is, you know, they have almost a 10% increase in their budget, uh, their share of the Frontier budget. This is, it's, it's what their increase, their proposition two and a half increases. Our educate, I'm sure our educational increase for us is our, what we're allowed under proposition two and a half to increase. I'm sure it is. It's more than that, actually. That's probably more. Whatever. We cannot, it's not sustainable. We need to write just some kind of, we need some information from Darius to, to write this down, you know, letters. And, it, and the, it should be from all four towns submitting a letter. I can't guarantee that. You know that. I know. Um, I know. It, it's, I think it's a definite laudable idea. It's just, I'm, the priorities that the other town set aren't something that I can I do. I know, but I was hoping you could come up. We, we get this letter. You, are, I would make a motion that we send a letter. Would you second it? I would. All right. Rolls in favor? Aye. 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 And I, Carolyn S. Okay. So we're asking you to try to get this letter and, in, and circulate it to the other town administrators so that they could get a letter out too. I realize you have no control over the other towns, but we are all hurting for- Oh yeah, we, and we all understand that. This has been flying around Stam listserv for the last four days. Right, we need, we need to submit something for that testimony, mm -hmm. okay? Usually they will let us submit comments after the two, but at least if we can try for Monday and submit the rep for written record, that would be really great. I know it's just one more thing to ask you to do, but I really do think it's important. We have to complain. And I, when I go to the, um, when I sign on to the elementary school meeting, I will say I am encouraging all the towns to send a letter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that it's not just you reaching out. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you remember anything, Casey? Did you? No, I I I got through it. It was oh, okay. Good. It was the Smith Oak thing. Excellent. Is there anything else? I'm I'm all set. Can we make a motion. Oh, the only oh. thing is, well, Chris Chris Harris is here, so he might want to say something. You don't? Okay. No, I'm good. Thank you very much. What's the weather like in El Paso? <laughs> it hit 77 degrees today. That does not suck, I have to say. <laughs> good for you. It, it, it's a good week. Chris, thank you for being there the whole night. No, uh, no, lots of interesting topics. Thank you. Yes, but we are doing the 350 um, Peter Thomas talk, and we are making movement on the other activities. Please come to our um, 350th on Monday at 6.30. If you were willing to volunteer. And Chris did write a long email about status, Chris Harris, about status of some of the activities. Um, that's very informative. Thank you, Chris. Yep. Great. So I'll make a motion to adjourn. And I will second that. All in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. I hope everyone has a lovely evening. <laughs>